Hey everyone, my name is Mirai and welcome to a one-on-one -on -one video series where I'll be setting up IS Boxer from scratch and then some. So ultimately, as I begin to record this right now, ultimately what I'm aiming for is for this to be a three-part video series where this video, part one, is essentially going to be the quick setup wizard video that I already have available on my channel. So we'll be going through the quick setup wizard, we'll be creating a character set, we'll be exploring IS Boxer at the surface level, We'll be uh, exporting our settings to inner space and then launching game clients, creating characters, and then taking those characters into the game world where I'll be showing how to tackle the initial hurdles uh, and basics of the multi-boxing play style. And that will conclude this video here. Then off camera, I will continue to level those characters somewhere mid to high teens, not sure yet. Again, we are shooting from the hip here. But uh, the second video will pick up after that. And this second video is going to be a whole bunch of stuff. So the post wizard setup video will be somewhat talked about in there. Uh, again, that is a video that already exists on my channel. I'll be pulling from other videos as well to integrate into the wizard profile that we create in this video here. I'll be creating a second character set. We'll be dealing with melee. It'll be a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm sure things that I haven't even thought of yet because we're not quite there. But that will conclude that video. It's going to be packed full of information, hopefully. Hopefully. I don't mean to hype it up too much, but it should be packed full of info. So that'll be that video. And then once again, off camera, I will continue to level the, the characters. We'll have several teams at this point. And the third video should be taking place where I enjoy spending the most of my time. And that is going to be in a dungeon. Read into that however you'd like. But we are likely going to be in uh, Scarlet Monastery. One of the two dungeons or both of them, there are two different Scarlet Monastery instances. And I like to, I, I would like to be there because simply, simply put, when you're a new multi-boxer, I think Scarlet Monastery is the first place where you're going to run into some mechanics that are likely going to trip you up. And so that's, I think it's a good place to practice initially. So in, in the third video, I'll be showing tanking, healing, DPS, all basic stuff. And I, I, I don't, don't mean it to be a cop-out when I say basic. It's just that things can get very, very intricate and in-depth and personalized. And I'm hoping to just kind of help you understand the basics on both multi-boxing and using Ice Boxer to do so. So that should be all three videos. I understand you're probably looking at the runtime of this video and you're like, dude, dude, dude. I understand it is going to be a very long video. I did just say there is a quick setup wizard and post wizard setup video already available on my channel. And I think both of those videos together have a, a runtime that totals less than 40 minutes. So if you want the absolute basic information to get started, that's already there. Those are already there. Check out those videos. If you want a one-on-one -on -one talk coaching with me, that's what this video series is about. Now, maybe I should introduce myself. There's going to be some newcomers here because they're going to be asking, why the hell should I be listening to an old guy with no hair and poor eyesight? I don't blame you. Well, I have been part of the multiboxing community for uh, quite a while. I believe my registration date on Dual Dash Boxing is April of 2009. I believe that is correct. And I've of course, we are recording this at the beginning of August 2019. So I have been part of the community for at least 10 years now. And for 99.9% .9 of that time, I've been using IS Boxer to multibox. So for over a decade, I've been doing this with IS Boxer. And so I know a thing or two about IS Boxer. I kind of know my way around the program. Now, if you do search through my channel, you may notice that I don't necessarily have any notable achievements. <laughs> that may be a red flag for some. However, I'm much more of a theory crafter, systems designer type of person. I really enjoy spending a lot of time in IS Boxer. It becomes its own game. And I'm certainly not the only person who echoes that sentiment. There's, there are many others. And so it, uh, I really enjoy doing that. And I've, I've, you'll see that the, a lot of my videos are tutorial type of videos. and. Um, that's exactly what this series is going to be as well. Now, one more thing I think I should uh, touch on here at the beginning because I'm probably going to forget about it later. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. IS Boxer itself, its full name is IS Boxer Toolkit. So it is a toolkit. It's a kit of tools. It's a toolbox, however you want to look at it. I've said in the past that I find it to be a phenomenal management program from a multi-boxing perspective. So it manages characters, character sets, which is uh, your teams, um, map keys, key maps, hot keys, 
virtual files, window layouts, uh, all the overlays that you can create, everything. And you can integrate all that with different teams and different characters. Virtualization it gets pretty crazy and hectic. And so um, because of that, there are multiple ways to do things because it is a toolkit. So there's multiple ways to do things. And you as a new user, you're going to be, you're going to find yourself configuring things poorly and you won't know it at first. You're going to build a shaky foundation as you begin to add on to your profile. And as you continue to build upon the, the shaky foundation, it gets messier and messier. Not that your eyes box or profile is going to collapse like a building would collapse, but you're going to find yourself wanting to clear your profile and kind of start fresh. And there are many times you'll do that. I've done that plenty of times in the last 10 plus years, right? So don't get discouraged when that happens. Now, with that said, maybe I have a, a real world analogy here that I don't think I've shared before, but hopefully we'll shine some light on this. So let's just say you have to drive a nail into a board and you have a toolbox in front of you and you can pull any handheld tool out of it that you wanted to. What would you pick? The obvious answer is you would grab the hammer. You would take the hammer and you would drive the nail into the board. But for someone who wasn't aware of what these tools were, who's completely new to say carpentry or anything, we go back to 10,000 BC, whatever it is, we present these handheld tools to all these old tribesmen. What would they do? Would they initially, would they immediately go for the hammer? Probably not, right? So could they take, could they take an adjustable wrench and take the flat side of it and bang that into the nail to drive it into the board? Sure they could. Could they take the butt end of a screwdriver and bang that into the, into the nail? They could certainly do that as well. Could they say, forget these tools, let's just take a rock in the surrounding area and bang the nail into the board? That would also work. So we've got four ways to, to drive the nail into the hammer, three of which are not that efficient, one which is more efficient than the rest. And that is exactly how you may find several different aspects of Boxer. And you're not going to know specifically exactly where you might be going wrong until you configure it a certain way. And then you learn from that. It's, it's a learning experience. You repetition, muscle memory, the whole thing, right? It's a whole new learning experience. Now, I don't mean to scare anyone away. I don't mean to make Boxer sound like it's some impossible tool to use that's going to take minimum 1,000 hours before you get the gist of it. That's not true. If your, if your end game goal is simply playing the same class, same class teams, just doing world quests, say at the, 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 uh, the top level of, of World of Warcraft, doing world quests, doing old dungeon runs and raid dungeons for transmog, or just wanting to re-experience the old stuff, you can't get five people together to do this, and you want to just do that stuff, that is very simple. There is with, you know, very easy to do all of that. However, on the flip side, if you want to push the limit on the other end of the spectrum, if you want to push the limit, you want to do mythic plus dungeons, you want to do 10 man entry level rating as a multi boxer, you can do that. But you've got the easy stuff and you've got the more difficult stuff. And the more difficult stuff is going to take more time investment, more discipline, a lot of learning experiences along the way, tripping yourself up, getting up and starting over. It's just that easy, like anything else in life, really. So with that said, I think that's the intro. I think that's everything I wanted to say. So give me a moment to get a drink of water and then we'll jump into ISBox and we'll start configuring this bad boy. Okay. So uh, before jumping into IS Boxer, I do have to point out that uh, IS in IS Boxer is an initialism for Innerspace. So Innerspace is actually the core program and IS Boxer is the front end GUI. And so you do need either active subscription time or an active trial to access Innerspace and more or less follow along. Um, with that said though, I do have a referral link in the description. Don't shut off the video just yet. I get zero financial benefit from you clicking on that. I get zero dollars and zero cents. My referral link is exactly the same as everyone else's referral link in the sense that we both get free subscription time. Uh, however, to be fair, I do have a lot of free subscription time from my referral link. So if you want to give it to someone else, you know, you can just shoot into the Icebox or Discord and say, hey, I'm about to sign up. Does anyone want to give me the referral link and we can both get free subscription time? Now, just to be fair, if you did already sign up and it's very recent, you might be able to talk to Lax and see if he can apply a referral benefit to you and someone else. However, 
you know, you might not be able to get that. And especially if it's been an extended period of time since you signed up, I don't think you're going to get it, but it's, it's worth asking. There's no guarantee. This is not a guarantee to that. I'm just saying, just ask. So with that out of the way, you will have to add your game to inner space as well. I, uh, again, I'm setting up World of Warcraft. So this is what you can't see. We'll hide the, uh, the camera. And you can see here at the very top, after you've added your game, you will see it at the top here. And so I've got a whole bunch of stuff listed here because I've simply installed the PTR. I've installed the retail client and I also have classic installed as well. So this is what you'll see if you have all of those installed. If you only have retail installed, you'll only see the retail stuff. If you only have classic installed, then you'll only see the classic uh, launcher here. So that's totally fine. That's completely understandable. However, one final thing, if you are playing World of Warcraft, I'm doing this in retail. So we're going to jump into the retail folder. Um, your WTF folder holds uh, under the account folder. It holds all of where your, uh, your, your characters that have been logged into the game world. All of that is stored in there. That's where all of your add-on data is stored as well. So if you don't want to delete the account folder, that's totally fine. I'm going to be starting fresh. So I'm going to delete the entire WTF folder. What I do recommend though, is because most people have not actually launched the game client directly. When you use the launcher, the Battle.net launcher, you don't actually launch the game client directly. And so what can sometimes happen and trip you up is you get thrown into, as a, if you're a non, if you're a non North American player, you can sometimes get thrown into the North American region. And when you try to log in, that screws you up and you can't log in. You get a weird, you get a weird, um, error message and then you have to go change your region. So the way to get around that right now is to simply delete the config.wtf file. You will, you will just lose your video settings because this is a file that's going to be copied by ISBoxer and it's going to be a per character setting that gets saved. Uh, so you can save all of your login information per character, all of your video settings per character. So it is, again, if you've never directly launched with the client itself, it's good to maybe delete that right now. If you're a non North American player, I'm starting completely fresh here, right? So I've already backed up all my add-on stuff from, from before. I'm going to delete the WTF folder. And then after you do that, after you either delete the WTF folder or the config WTF, launch the game client directly. You're going to be hit with this prompt right here. This is going to put you in the correct region, right? So obviously I'm playing in English Americas and that's fine. But if you're playing somewhere else, select that and it'll set it properly in the config.wtf as it recreates it here. And yes, it tells you you're going to be locked to the, you're not technically locked. You can change that and you can change that to whatever you want in the config.wtf. This is also going to launch the game client though. And it might be a little loud when you first launch. The other thing you're going to want to do here is simply in the video settings, kind of uh, if you're not so sure that your computer is going to be able to handle multi-boxing, if you don't have a beast of a machine, you may want to just turn down your video settings a little bit right now because these are going to be copied. It's not crucial because you can change them once again when we first log in, after we launch our character set, we launch our team, the game clients come up, and before we log in, we can once again change the video settings. I'll, I'll hopefully remember to point that out, but this is good practice to just kind of start off in case you forget it there. So the final thing to point out here is that if you have, um, so right, you use the slider, it'll change things down here, but it only affects what's below the slider. If you have anti-aliasing turned on or you have a, a render scale higher than 100% and you change this, you're like, I'm gonna drop this all the way down to one. You can see that render scale is still turned on and anti-aliasing is still turned on as well. So you wanna make sure that you set any settings that you want. Uh, I'm already familiar with this, so I'm uh, certain that my machine can handle most of this. I'm just going to turn down, turn off SSAO and turn down my liquid detail. Um, I'm also going to turn on vertical sync. I like that. We'll talk about that once we're in ISBoxer. I'm going to leave all the anti-aliasing stuff off under the advanced tab here. You can also set some of the AA uh, settings as well. Something else I do want to point out is the graphics API. We'll be talking about this again when we're in ISBoxer, but like I said, this is going to get copied to uh, other files. There's different ways to approach this, but I'll just point this out. Now you've got three options at this current point in time. You have three options. If you want to be on the safe side, choose DirectX 11 legacy. If you have a very powerful machine and you want to get the best performance out of the game clients, then DirectX 12 is likely going to be your answer. I'm aware with what's happening here. I've already done some dry runs of this. I can definitely handle DirectX 12, but again, if you're not so sure, DirectX 11 is the safe option. Uh, finally, if you have some disconnect issues, check out the network settings here. You can play with these. Um, different people have had different results with these. Sound, this is where I need to dial this down a little bit here. Um, I don't know, 25-ish? Probably is fine. 
uh, air speech, nope, no pet battle music, no music altogether, actually, and no pet sounds. And then that's good. So I'll hit apply. Okay. And we'll quit out of here. And all of this, once again, gets saved in our newly configured, our newly created config.wtf file. So now we're set for World of Warcraft, right? We can minimize this and we can come into Iceboxer. Now, before we get started, again, there's all these, so <laughs> before we get started for the third time, I did create a test character here, just simply to show what happens if you have existing characters in Iceboxer already, because you will eventually run into this. So I just want to show this as a test character, we'll delete it afterwards. So I'm going to use the wizard, the quick setup wizard, right under the wizard's menu, or control Q, if you like short uh, keyboard shortcuts. I do like keyboard shortcuts. Um, I don't think I need to move this really, but we'll just move it to there. First step is what game are you playing? We're playing World of Warcraft. Next. Second step, people tend to get kind of tripped up on this step here, so there's a few things to note. This big box on the left here, this will show either characters auto-detected uh, through the game client itself or from Iceboxer. So if you have a, if you have a pre-existing character in Iceboxer, you can click on it, you can see all the information over here on the right. What One thing that trips people up is if you're using characters that already exist in Iceboxer, you click on them, and then you can hit add character to team, right? What some, sometimes what some people do is they will make changes in say this dropdown here, and then they'll add the character to the team. Any changes made on pre-existing characters do not carry over. This character with its current preset settings that are already there, are, it's just added to the team. Anything change here, this is just simply what is set. You cannot change this here. You can change this after the wizard though. Likewise, anything set in the wizard, you can change afterwards. Nothing is set in stone, just to be absolutely clear. So again, pre-existing characters just carry over their already applied settings. You can't change what you see here on pre-existing characters. So then there's this from World of Warcraft. Some other games store uh, logins on the disk as well. This pulls from the disk. I did say the WTF folder. So again, if you go into the WTF folder and under account, any character that's already been logged in will have, you'll see it. I'm not going to go through there right now, but um, in fact, this is from the classic realm. So um, this one character here is a uh, leftover from the classic realm that I, I, I played. And so you can see some of the information here as well. You can make changes to this, I believe, but again, the, the previous may apply for a pre-existing character. These, you may not be able to change this until after the wizard. So just keep that in mind. Um, the other thing that some people get hung up on is the fact that if their characters aren't detected from the disc and you know you, you have to have Interspace pointed at a, um, uh, a valid World of Warcraft path and you have to have, again, already logged the characters into the game world for that folder to be created, which is where... Um, IS Boxer picks up that information. So if for some reason some people still report that they can't get their characters to be detected, personally I think it's a little bit of pebcack, but I am not I'm not here, I'm not here to pass any judgment, right? So ultimately, don't get hung up on this. Please just forget about this stuff. You don't need this. There's no special treatment for any for any characters that get pulled off the disc. Just fill in the information on the right hand side. That's all you have to do. So I'm gonna delete all this stuff out of here and we'll go over this here. So again, I'm going to be starting fresh. So actual character name, I said I did not create my characters yet. We'll be creating them once we're in the game client. You can have them created already. It's totally fine. If you know their names already, fill in the actual character name and then the display name will populate as well. So I'm just putting in generic character names for right now. Account name is optional. Battle.net account name is your email and account name would be your sub account name. So wow, three However, it's listed. You just saw it listed here. I'm not going to click on these guys because it'll overwrite what we put here. But you saw it. It's like a, a, a chain of numbers and then a pound sign and then uh, another number. So it's a little weird. I, I don't. Ultimately, I don't fill in either of these fields. Some people are finicky about storing their login information here. If you want to, go for it. If you don't want to, it's totally fine. I don't use them because of the way that Iceboxer virtualizes the config.wtf, it'll remember your login information anyway, as long as you check the remember account name box on the login screen. When we're there, you'll see me do that. Realm name is also optional. However, I will say that if you ever expect to play a mixed realm team, you should probably just fill this in now. It's going to save you a lot of time later. And by filling it in now, even if you have a bunch of characters on the same realm, there's no harm in doing so. It's just, it's a lot less work. And I'll kind of show why that is once we get past the wizard. So we're going to be play, playing on Ilaria. Uh, configure based on game is uh, what we just chose in the previous step. Now, game and game profile. Um, once again, I just have World of Warcraft 
um, loaded. And these are the same drop downs that we just saw at the top of the inner space context menu. And again, I have the test client here because I have the PTR installed. I have the standard client here because I have retail installed. That's what we're going to be setting up. And I have the classic client here because I have classic installed. And of course, the launcher is an option as well. I won't be using the launcher, but if you want to use the launcher, there's, I would check, I'm not going to really be talking about it. I would definitely check out the Quick Setup Wizard uh, standalone video, the, fast, the, the shorter one. And uh, in there, I talk about how to handle using the launcher. I'm just not a fan of using the launcher. I like directly launching the game clients. So once again, we see the DirectX 11 Legacy, DirectX 11, and DirectX 12. We saw those same three choices in the game client itself. Now, if you want to control these through the game client itself, then just pick World of Warcraft client. If you want to force them when you first launch the game client, you can always force it to be DirectX 11 Legacy. So the reason you would do this, the reason you may want to do this, is if you just set it in the game client, and let's say you want to use DirectX 11 Legacy, and you assign that in the game client, and you set this setting here. What may happen is a big patch comes along, and it's a patch that will reset your video settings. Whenever your video settings are reset, you will default to DirectX 12. You may not know that that happens. And then you log into the game client, you log into your character set, and you get into the game world, and then you have poor performance because your machine can't handle DirectX 12 you know, times that many game clients that you're trying to run. And you're troubleshooting, and you're running around in circles, you're confused, you're not sure why their performance sucks. But in reality, the, the video settings are reset, and instead of DirectX 11 Legacy, you're now running DirectX 12. So if you want to avoid that, you can choose to always force the game client to a specific version of DirectX. And this is only for retail or PTR. Classic only uses standard DirectX 11. It doesn't use it. There's no choices. So I'm just pointing that out now. If, if you want to be on the safest side, <laughs> you would want to just choose DirectX 11 Legacy here. Personally, this is a one-on-one -on -one series, so I'm setting this up for myself. I like to control it to the game client, and I'm aware that when big patches happen, things can be reset. But I also try to use DirectX 12 where I can because I have a pretty beastly machine. So there's that. And we're just going to create, uh, continue to create generic characters. You can use the enter key in this field. So we're just going to do that. We're going to create our five characters down here. If you need to reorder them, click on one, click the up and down. If you need to remove one, click the remove button. Pretty self-explanatory. Next step, character set name. Um, I guess we're going to start with druids. Sounds good. We're going to make some druids. Next step four, the window layout step. So this is a step that also kind of, uh, I guess I can make this a little bit bigger. This is a step that kind of uh, uh, trips some people up as well. And there's a few things to talk about here. So as I say in the video, if you watch the other video, I say there's a, a handful of uh, settings, layouts to choose from in the dropdown here. When you click in the dropdown, when this is actually selected, you can just use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down real fast uh, to check out the different layouts and whatnot. Uh, you'll see some very similar layouts like this one right here. There's only one little difference. And that's, of course, this little bit of separation from the bottom of your display. So what this is doing, the description is here in the... Uh, well, right here in the in the drop down, it says avoid taskbar, whereas this one doesn't have avoid taskbar written there. So clearly, you've got the choice to avoid taskbar or not avoid the taskbar in this type of situation. If you come over to the right hand side, there are some further options to play with. So let's say we want to always avoid the taskbar. We're going to set this to true. So now the layouts in the drop down will reset, and the only options available will all be ones that avoid the taskbars. I scroll through them, you can see there, there's always a separation there at the bottom for every single choice. Again, if you take this, you set this to false, then you will only see layouts that fit that particular criteria. If you set it to blank, it'll show, once again, both options for you to pick from. If you, and again, if you have multiple displays, you will see even more layouts than what I'm seeing here. But just to be completely fair, the window layout wizard is very basic. Some people want to do some crazy shit with their window layouts, and you can do the craziest stuff that you want to, but you have to configure it uh, um, after the wizard. Like, you know, people will try to move around the regions here. This is just a static layout showing you some basic layouts, good stuff to get started, just to get a kind of a grasp on what's happening. So the, the wizard can't do a whole lot, but you can do as much as you want after the wizard. And I'll show that section. So another thing I like here, and I, I point this out in the standalone video, is the leave a hole option. I personally use the leave a hole option, and I also think the leave a hole option by setting it to true is also good for new players. And hopefully I'll remember to point that out on 
the the login screen when we're finally after we finally launched the the, uh, the team and the character set and the game clients. So now again, it's refreshed and everything. Uh, we only get to see the leave a hole options. Leave a hole adds an additional region. So we only have five characters in our character set in our team, but we have six regions here now. And you'll see why that is. You'll see why that is. It's, I, I can't explain it any better than you just seeing how it works. And um, one more that, tri that, that gets people here is the preferred edge. So obviously we, it auto defaults to bottom. And then of course, when you look at, when you look at, well, we really don't have much to look at, but this one, the small windows are on the bottom. If we set this to say uh, left, then even this one is reversed, right? Because this one had this big region on the left-hand side before, but now the smaller regions are bordering the left and the bottom. Likewise, this particular layout here now has its regions along the left-hand side. This, these types of layouts were pretty hot back in the day, and I'm sure I enjoyed using one of these side window layouts as well. These days, I've grown out of that. It's not for me. It may be for you. There is no best option, right? Just You have to just kind of figure out and feel out what works best for you. If you're not sure, try it out. You can always just switch it later, man. There's nothing, again, nothing is set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. However, these days, I do like to use top. So this is my particular layout right here. This is what I like, and this is what I'll be going with. Uh, in addition to that, if you want to re, if you do have multiple monitors, you can click on use monitors here. Um, if you want to reorder your monitors, like sometimes... Um, uh, this window layout wizard will not show you. Sometimes you just want to swap your, your, your layouts around. Sometimes the big window is on your left display and the smaller windows are on your right and you want to swap that around. What you can do is you can just come into this little click, this little button here. And you can, if you had multiple displays, you can just reorder the displays with these arrows. That's fine. You can actually change a whole bunch of properties of your displays as well. It can get, uh, you can, whoops, well, okay. You can uh, end up potentially breaking some things in there. Not like it's just, you just break what your window layout looks like. So just keep that in mind. Uh, 3d render. That's a scaling option, main window size, something I will hopefully remember to talk about later. If I don't, I'll try to remember it in the second video in the next video, video effects as well. We'll actually be talking about that in the next video, but, uh, here's an option. I don't really like this option. It's very limited, very restrictive. And so, um, if you check out my channel, before watching the next video, uh, there is a f there are a few video effects videos on there. Some deal with layouts. One is a basic one. One is a custom one. I like setting up my own custom VFX layouts. And so in the next video, I will be doing that. But I'm not changing. I'm not touching anything now. We're just using a standard non-VFX layout. So next, <laughs> this is another set. This is another step. This is the performance uh, setting step where people do get, I, I, I keep saying this, but people get tripped up on a lot of this stuff. They, they fall into this pit hole of what's, the best. And, and that's a terrible hole to be in. Just try things out, please. Now, when it comes to this, I, I do point out in the standalone video that if you think your machine isn't all that powerful, you should drop the background frame rate. So you might want to set this to 20. You might want to set this to 15, right? And I do follow that up by saying, uh, but a low background frame rate may cause adverse and unwanted effects or something to that nature. So that's the reason. I mean, you could just say, well, why don't we just set this to one? All right, why don't we just set the background frame rate to one? Because then your background frame rates are going to be a slideshow. And you have to understand that um, I believe input from the keyboard and the mouse, all peripherals, are only processed on a frame. So if you only put one frame per second, uh, you only get one attempt to process any sort of input per second. So you genuinely want to kick that up a little bit. Um, different games have different thresholds. Will there work properly? So World of Warcraft probably works pretty good down to about 15. I think maybe some people venture lower than that. But again, setting it to like single digits is generally pretty garbage. Um, I know my machine is powerful enough to, to handle this demonstration of what we're doing here in the one-on-one -on -one series at 60-30. So I'm just going to leave it at the default. Um, below here in the miscellaneous section, I've never touched anything here. If your machine, this is hyper threading, but really it's, it's, um, it's generic. If, if, if your CPU has SMT, AMD calls it SMT, which is simultaneous multi-threading, which is actually what it is. Hyper threading is simply the same thing, just Intel's version of it. So if you have hyper threading or AMD's SMT, you should probably set this to true. The only thing this affects is the round robin balancing down here at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, I don't touch the master slot or master slot CPU. I've never changed it. I have no idea what they do. Don't ask me. I don't know. I don't know. So the second half here is the CPU core assignment. So um, there are a few things to note. I like to suggest that there are several of us that work tech support that like to suggest that people, when you want the, the, the best 
the best performance, you should probably select uh, all CPUs with every window. That will probably net you the best results. However, if you have a high core count CPU, so 10 to 12 cores and up, you may want to start uh, dabbling in creating your own custom CPU core assignment. And I'm actually going to be doing that myself. Now, I have to point this out here that sometimes people will say the round robin balancing is really beneficial for them and they find that it works great. I don't, personally, I, the data doesn't back that up <laughs> because World of Warcraft as a, as a game can use easily four threads, if not six. And so when you do round robin, it generally restricts you to one or two, one or two threads, which restricts the game client from being able to use all of its available resources to pull from your machine. Um, so I don't really like round robin, but it's worth trying it out. It's all just worth trying it out. Uh, ultimately though, I would say select all CPUs with every window is a great place to start. And that's where I'll be starting. Although I will be dialing in a custom CPU core assignment when we're finally in IS Boxer. So the final step of the wizard at the top, you've got MMO standard should already be selected. It will be if you chose any sort of MMORPG on the first step of the wizard. Uh, otherwise, if you chose an action RPG, we're not covering any of that, but you will be in a generic broadcasting uh, template. Uh, if you're interested in that, watch the Diablo 3 quick setup wizard video that covers all of that. MMO Pro is another is another type of setup that IS Boxer is capable of using. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a spoiler alert here. After you get kind of a good grasp on IS Boxer and you're somewhat familiar with it, I do suggest you move to the Pro system. There's an entirely separate uh, video series for that on my channel here, and it really gives you the most of what IS Boxer has to offer. Um, it's not necessarily like a switch, but it's just a collection of features that work very well together. And uh, we're not going to be delving into any parts of the Pro system whatsoever in this series, but... I just want to point that out because some people may have questions, right? So uh, MMO standard is what we've got. It's what we're using. And so, uh, like I say in the standalone video, I'm not really going to change anything here. And I don't suggest you really do uh, either. Um, but we'll be changing some things after IS Boxer or after the wizard. I'm sorry, after the wizard. So toggle broadcasting mode is the key combination for toggling on mouse and uh, keyboard broadcasting, just turning it all on all of the time. Uh, just keep that in mind. You might want to, honestly, I, I hate to sound, I hate to make it sound like this is work, but it really does help to maybe just write some of this stuff down just in case. I mean, it's good to have notes, just, you know, handy, just a small little notepads. I, I know some people are like, I don't want to write, this shouldn't be work. Well, it's not work, man, but you're, you're jumping into a new thing. You know, you're jumping into a new thing and, and there's kind of a lot of stuff just here in general. So anyway, shift alt R, um, broadcasting is actually broadcasting and repeater are interchangeable terms here. So it's shift alt R for repeater is, is the way to remember that. And then toggle key maps and menu hotkeys. This is the main key map toggle. Essentially this will pause IS boxer so that you can use say like the I uh, use the keyboard to type in chat or to type into uh, your password or, or login or whatnot. I'll be talking about this a lot once we get in game, but sh um, it is the key maps toggle. So shift alt M for key maps. Uh, activate next window is just one of many ways to switch windows. I'm not touching that. If you have an alt GR key, um, you will know if you do, it will be on your keyboard, right? Uh, generally like a, it's non North American, non English layouts and whatnot have alt GR keys. So if you do check that, we'll be talking about that in uh, a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't break anything necessarily. It just changes one thing. Um, in-game Icebox or GUI hotkey. This is set in your character set. I'm not going to be changing this right now, but we might be touching it a little, little bit later in another video. I won't be doing anything with that here. Um, below here, we've got the basic broadcasting of one through equals. This, by checking this, you're telling Icebox that you just want to set up one through equals and your keyboard's number row above the letters to broadcast all of your game clients. And so I want that. If you also use Alt and or Control and or Shift, you can check these boxes. I use Shift, so I'll set this up. This is just a little thing that'll tell you we're going to configure this and it's going to make changes. And this is going to affect all of your character sets. It's fine. We don't have anything else going on right now. Um, the in-game, the action bar overlay, this is a picture of it. It really doesn't do it much justice. I probably won't be doing much with this. If I remember, I'd like to turn it on and show generally how it works, but I probably won't do that until the second or even the third video because it's it's generally aimed at clickers. So if you're a clicker, if you really like to click the spells in your action bar, this is uh, for you then. Although it's used, that's just kind of a basic way to look at it. Menus and overlays, they can be incredibly complex. So just... <laughs> 
maybe watch the standalone video because I do talk about it in there, and as well as the end of the post wizard setup video uh, is where I talk about these action bar overlays. So that's probably something worth checking out. Uh, enable auto assist. We are going to keep that on for now, but ultimately, I prefer to use a manual assist. So auto assist just more or less integrates an assist into your DPS keys, whereas as you get higher up, as a, as things become more challenging in content, I think an auto assist can be um, it can it can be kind of detrimental to the overall like uh, boss fight or something like that. So we'll talk more about that. But I'm going to leave it enabled for now. I'll be turning it off later, and I'll be showing how to toggle it on and off. Uh, auto interact as well. Don't please don't turn this on for now. We'll cover this in the melee section and stuff like that in the next video. Um, I guess I should point this out. If you're playing, <laughs> if you're playing, if you're playing a the vanilla game client, the old 1.12, um, this isn't the setting you want. And in fact. This on the first step of the wizard, you should have not chosen World of Warcraft. In fact, you should probably, if you're trying to set this up for 1.12, you should go watch the generic or the general MMORPG setup video for the wizard on that, because you have to configure things completely differently. For everyone 2.x and up, um, including classic, which I understand is 1.13, um, we all use the macro. So just leave this generated while macros selection here. That's totally fine. Uh, follow me is Alt F by default, Alt A for assist. Interactive target does exist in World of Warcraft. We'll be setting that at a different time though, later in this video. Uh, slot these, I, there's no way on my dry runs of this, I'm, I'm not going to spend time talking about this because my God, I just get sucked into a fucking, ah, just a 38 paragraph talk about trying to, trying, trying to explain this. And this really, needs its own video to talk about how the FTL system works. Regardless, these are something sometimes I hate it when people play the card of just, just trust me, bro. This is what you want. Just trust me right here. I have to play that card. I have to play the card of just trust me. Please don't change these. Um, it uses a modifier key plus backspace. This does not, this does not stop you from, this does not stop you from using the backspace key in chat or anything like that. Uh, same thing here. It's a modifier plus a F11. So We'll maybe touch a little bit more on this, but I'm not going to delve deep into this. This is just based off of the FTL macros that IS Boxer writes for you so that you don't have to write any macros. Once we get in game, we use the IS Boxer add-on and follow and assist just work magically out of the box. And it's all thanks to the FTL system. So we are done with the wizard. We're going to hit finish here. And then here we are going to talk about these sections of IS Boxer. But once again, I'm going to take a quick break and I will be right back. Okay, so let's talk about IS Boxer. Uh, now I did say at the beginning, we we're just going to be this touching on the surface level of things. IS Boxer can of course be pretty intricate and complex. And ultimately there's several areas of IS Boxer that can just be super personalized for the person who's creating the profile. And so because of that, I can't really, I mean, there's really no need to delve into the, the advanced sections of anything. I'm just going to be pointing out a handful of settings that are generally useful to new players, but it might be a lot of, lot of information to take in regardless, but let's just go down the list. Uh, anyway, so at the very top, the, the word IS boxer in the upper left pane. Um, yeah, I'll talk about something else in a moment. In the upper left pane here, we click on the word IS Boxer, and then this is only really relevant to like 1% of people. If for some reason you found that you've installed Interspace like twice or more than once, and you're getting weird feedback when you export your settings out of IS Boxer to Interspace, um, you may have uh, IS Boxer pointed at the wrong version of Interspace for some reason. I don't know. Some people have run into that, so I'm just going to point out that the path to the Interspace folder is right here. Um, so characters, right. Well, we don't need our test character anymore. We'll delete them. Fantastic. So what I wanted to point out was the workflow of IS Boxer is simply, you click on something in the upper left pane and then the lower left pane that populates with information. And if there's more information then the lower right pane populates with information as well. So it's a upper left, lower left, lower right type of setup. The upper right is just simply a browser and, uh, when you finish the quick setup wizard, it brings up this, like what now? Um, I'm not exactly sure what this says. I've never read through it, but uh, <laughs> what now here? We're handling that uh, ourselves. So we do have generic characters listed here, but there are per character settings. So keep that in mind. Uh, the game and game profile specifically. So if you make a change here to DirectX 11 Legacy and you come over here, this character is still assigned to the standard World of Warcraft client. So 
if you need to make a change to which version of DirectX 11 you're running, or maybe you want to switch between the launcher and directly launching the game client, because the launcher setting is right here as well, you would do that here on a per character basis, right? So if you had a lot of characters, you would have to make changes to a lot of these fields uh, themselves. And that's why I said the game server, even though you may not be playing on a mixed realm uh, team anytime soon, if for some reason you have like 10, 15, 20, 30 characters listed here, which can happen, you know, people build up characters as they play for extended periods of time, you would have to fill in this field on all of those characters. And But likewise, you do have to change the game. If you need to change the game profile, you still have to do that anyway. So something to keep in mind. Now, uh, the bottom left pane here has character-specific uh, attachments to this character here. I'll explain kind of what this is uh, a little bit later as we get further down to virtual files, it's a good way to point this out. Ultimately, what I'm, what I'm saying is you shouldn't create copies of characters. So you can right click and you can make a copy of a character. Um, it's good practice not to copy characters, at least right off the bat. And again, I'll show when we get down to virtual files, the, the, there's a uh, detrimental side to that. It's, you're not going to see at the surface level. So actual character name here. When we finally get in game and we create our characters, the actual character name should match the character in game. So this is, again, just the display name up here, and this is the actual character name. And if it's different than the display name, it should be set here. Uh, these tabs, I've never touched on a character themselves. You see these tabs throughout Icebox, so there's some on the character, some on the character set, some on the slot. We'll talk about them where they're relevant, they're not relevant here. Uh, finally, configure game. This is, again, whatever game we chose in step one of the wizard, this will be pre-selected here for us. And if you have, uh, for some reason, so, well, not for some reason, but some people run like a, a six-man character set where they're doing five-man content and then they have an additional sixth character that is, say, like an auction house character and they don't want to launch them outside of Interspace. They still want to kind of keep them part of the same window layout and character set. So they ask, you know, how can I just make that one character ignore everything else I'm doing on the other five? And this is exactly the way to do that. Ignore keyboard mouse broadcast sent to this character. I also have a video on my channel. I think it's either called targeted broadcasting or selective broadcasting. One of those two is the name of it. There's more ways to um, selectively broadcast certain things to different characters. So keep that in mind. I'll, I'll be saying that a lot. I do apologize. Keep that in mind. There's a lot to keep in mind. Uh, character sets are here, but we're going to skip over character sets for a moment. We're going to shoot down to key maps because I, I think this is more important. So key maps... This is your list of key maps. Key maps can just kind of be viewed as a folder, a folder with a label on it. So you see something labeled combat that doesn't necessarily mean that they're only active when in combat. And in fact, Ice Boxer, it isn't a bot. It is not reading the game client. It has no idea what state of the game, what, what, what state the game is in. It doesn't know whether you're in combat, whether you're out of combat. It has absolutely no idea. And that's because knowing the state of the game, a third party having access to that, a third party program having access to that is generally against the rules of the game. So playing by the rules, we're not allowed to have that information. And so these are just merely labels for you to kind of break things up. Now, the wizard does create a handful of stuff here. If we look at the always on key map, we can see these are where activate maps. This is the main key map toggle, shift alt M and then activate repeat. I did say this was broadcasting and repeater were interchangeable terms. So it is listed here as activate repeat. Now, um, this is where you're going to need to begin kind of personalizing your profile. And I'm going to start personalizing mine a little bit here as well. So I do have a, a handful of buttons on my mouse. Um, and sh I, I did assign one button to my mouse as shift alt R. So I can quickly turn on repeater with just one press of a mouse button. Now I also like to toggle key maps with the same button. However, we can just do this. So now it's shift alt R and I'm going to add a modifier. So I'm going to be pressing, if I just hold control, and then I hit the button on my mouse, I will also toggle key maps. There's a handful of stuff in here, like even follow and assist, which will we'll change in a moment, that you will need to figure out what's easier, what's more convenient for you to press, because sometimes you're going to need you know, stuff at, right at your fingertips and other things not so much. It's very similar to just key binds in the game itself. You've got your, your oh shit buttons at very easy uh, spots to press or your main use abilities. They're very simple. You know, you don't have to reach halfway across the keyboard to hit those particular abilities. So the same thing applies to multiboxing as well. Although as a multiboxer, you may find that you've got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of key binds, a lot of key binds. People generally are upgrading their peripherals because of that. So they like, uh, people, 
They, they get mice with a lot of buttons on the side. They get keyboards like Logitech keyboards with a bunch of G keys, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it is something to keep in mind. Um, likewise, as I do say, explore Icebox or just look over it. You can just look through these key maps and see what's available. Um, in here, you've got things like activate mouse repeat. If you want to just set a hotkey for this, you would set a hotkey and you can always just, just toggle mouse broadcasting without the keyboard right here with this right here. Um, the wizard just sets that up for us here. Toggle formations menu, next window, previous window. So, you know, something that people do is like they set next window to mouse wheel up or per, uh, previous window to mouse wheel down. So you can just quickly scroll through your windows. Uh, again, I don't switch that way, but there's several different ways to switch between your windows. Toggle chat mode. I don't actually think that does what you think it does. I've never used that. And then of course, if you want to close all windows very quickly, you can just set a hot key for this and it'll just exit out of everything. Um, one thing to point out here though, I do point this out in the standalone video. You should really only be setting hotkeys when using the default wizard generated setup. You should really only be setting hotkeys. So these things over here, the keys that you will be pressing on your keyboard to execute these, uh, to, per to perform these mapped keys, you should really only be setting these hotkeys in key maps that end in the word hotkeys. So base hotkeys, combat broadcast hotkeys, and custom hotkeys are the main uh, key maps that you'll be setting any sort of hotkeys in. And if you want something to be on all of the time, you would set it in always on. Although sometimes people just mistake this and they'll set all of their standard keyboard keys that they want to broadcast in always on. And then when you try to toggle off key maps, this key map is not toggled off with the rest of them. It is It is not paused. Everything continues to work if it's in this key map, which is why it's called always on. Very convenient, very convenient. So again, I did say I was going to change my uh, personalize my setup here. So I'm going to change follow to mouse five. I'm going to change assist to mouse three, which is the middle mouse button. And so that's what I like from my own personalized setup. You can look through this, all jump. There's a few formations here. We'll actually set these as well. I'll show these off in game. I'll set this to shift up and alt up. That's fine. I'm not a big fan of the star formation. You can check it out if you want. It just spreads your characters out. It kind of looks like a star. Um, others turn left, others turn right. Interact with target. We'll be touching that once we get in game. Uh, face towards target. I would say, I would say review, I would say review the interact with target wiki page to see exactly uh, some, there's some quirks to this for sure. Um, invite team. We'll be using this. So shift alt I to invite your team. I'll be using this exact hotkey once we get in game. Uh, Jamba, if you use Jamba or EMA, EMA is the successor to Jamba. I will not be using either one of these in this series, but if you do use them, um, if you want to toggle strobing, here's an option to do so. Hold the control is more of an action RPG thing. Uh, I demonstrate that in the action RPG setup. I won't be touching those here. Uh, so the, the deal with the toggles, the party, the combat broadcast, and uh, the wow key maps, they're more or less considered control key maps. And so just Whatever is set in there is usually called in some other way. Now, it's kind of difficult to explain that without you understanding how mapped keys really kind of function. But this is kind of where I need to play another one of those just trust me for now cards. Please, uh, we do suggest that you don't set any hotkeys in any of the control key maps. And it even says that in the description of all of them, this key map is not toggled off by the hotkeys toggle and is not intended to contain any hotkeys. Uh, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, we did cover all of that. Uh, again, not important. This stuff we'll kind of be touching on at some point. Uh, this looks exactly like combat broadcast hotkeys. They operate a little bit differently. I do have a video on my channel called, I believe it's called Expanding Virtualization that kind of touches on why these two are separate. I'm not sure I'll be delving into a deep uh, description on why that is, but... For now, again, hotkeys, we set our hotkeys in here. And because during the wizard, we did choose to uh, broadcast one through equals on our keyboard's number row. I did explain that. So that's why this is automatically assigned for us. One through equals are automatically set with hotkeys on them. Um, you can see that here. Again, I did assign uh, shift as well. So we have the shift hotkeys. Uh, and because nothing is set in stone, you can either unassign these at any point in time by simply clicking on them and you know, coming in here, clicking delete and unchecking the modifier. And then there you go. Or likewise, if you want to assign, you know, Alt-1 at a later point in time, just hit here, Alt-1, and then boom, you've got Alt-1 assigned and you, you can now broadcast Alt-1. Now, the um, you can, of course, choose to broadcast whatever keys you want to broadcast to the rest of your game clients. A lot of people have a bunch of letters set up. I also have a bunch of letters set up. I'll be setting that up in the next video, not in this one. We'll just be using basic, uh, you know, one through equals stuff for now. Um, but 
ultimately you'll be using the mapped key wizard, but I'll also be showing how to configure some things uh, manually from scratch as well, because I think it helps to understand how to do that. If you expand uh, a mapped key real fast, you can see it's advanced options. If you click on it as well, um, one thing to point out, if you're setting something up for movement, um, you will want to hold any keystroke action settings set to on. This is just, this isn't a movement key. <laughs> this isn't a movement key, but if you look at something like the, for, it's important on like the formation. So the flying V formation definitely has this turned on. And um, we'll talk more about formations when we get in and, and how movement keys operate when you're broadcasting them. But the wizard just kind of defaults a lot of this stuff to on because, I don't have a good, I don't have a quick explanation for that. You'll just kind of have to just accept that the wizard does that. Um, but if you look at any, if you expand any maps key, you can see the advanced settings, you can reset, kind of like a cast sequence reset. You can choose to reset um, the, the, the steps if you have multiple steps. So if you right click on the word steps, you can add multiple steps and do actions per step as you press the hotkey. There's no automation here in the sense that you, if you want to execute a step, you have to press the hotkey. You can't just press the hotkey and have ISBoxer just move through a sequence automatically. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Again, this, is, this isn't a bot. Uh, so everything is, is done through manual key press, actual physical input of you know, peripheral devices, keyboard, mouse, foot pedals, even voice activation software some people use, even though that's really pretty clunky due to the latency. Like the, the software has to identify what you're saying, then it sends the command, then Iceboxer takes it, and then it gets broadcast. So there's a whole bunch of steps and that generally doesn't work all that well. Plus you kind of sound like an idiot when you're like, follow, follow, follow. <laughs> doesn't really work all that well, though it's kind of a cool concept. It's just really not there technologically. Um, so anyway, you click on a step and you can see the actions. There's only one action here. You click on an action, you can see the action properties. We're not going to be doing anything with actions. Uh, potentially, we'll be touching a handful of actions in the next video. But if you right-click on the word actions, you can see all of the actions that ISBoxer has available to it. Um, like I said, even in the beginning, as a 10-year veteran of this program, there are things that I still have not touched, and there's still things that I don't know how to set up myself. And the reasons for that is not because the, game, the, the program is just so damn complicated, even a 10-year player just doesn't understand it. It's simply because these are things that I've just never had to use. I've just never needed to use a handful of these things, and they just don't pertain to me in my setup, and that's totally okay. You will find that also happens to you. There's, a, there's plenty of stuff that just won't pertain to you and your setup. But there are about 40 actions, and I would suggest maybe checking out the Iceboxer wiki and the actions page to see kind of a list and a description of what all of these do. All of these actions also should more or less exist on the wiki, and they should have some sort of description. If you need any help, of course, always come to the Iceboxer forum or Discord where we can just help you with any of this stuff. But uh, some some steps may have multiple actions in them, and we'll be tackling all this in the next video as well. So there's that. Again, if you need to add more keys, probably just do it in the, uh, well, we'll talk about it in the next video. Custom hotkeys is a good place to put your custom hotkeys. But again, next video. Back up to character sets. Now there's a lot to talk about in character sets and I'll try to I'll try to speed through this. I never can do it though, man. I'm so sorry. But in the bottom left pane here, we can see slot numbers here. So there's slot numbers. I don't want to click on them just yet, but there's slot numbers. We can see our characters are added in order that we added them in the wizard, right? So characters one through five, when we finally name them, we'll be changing their names in Icebox so they won't be characters one through five anymore. They'll have actual display names that reflect their character names. But they're here and this is where your characters would be in this order had you already named them. Now, this is important. When you finally launch the game clients, they'll come up in a certain order. They'll be, um, they're tied more or less to the regions within your window layout. And you'll want to log in as you, as you move to slot one, you want to log in that account that houses this particular character. And then again, slot two, when you, when you switch over to it, you want to log into the account that houses this particular character. And you'll, you'll, see, you'll get a sense of how that works once we finally export, launch, and we finally log in. But do keep that in mind that it is necessary to keep the order of these characters in this order. Because this, again, Icebox are not knowing the state of the game. You have to tell it which window has which character. And so this is where you're telling it that information. And if you do it wrong, if you log, if you log the wrong character into the wrong slot, it will let you know once you get into the game, and I'll point that out on where you can find that information. So here, still in the bottom left, you can click on some of these nodes, and you can uh, you can assign things here. If you click on them and you click off the node, you can uh, unassign them. 
Likewise, if you just click on the thing itself, hit the delete key, it also goes away. So um, if you need to assign, say, uh, you want the action bar overlay that the wizard creates, here it is right here. It's called ISB, ISB 42 standard. If you want the formations menu to be loaded at all times, these are the default startups for the character set itself. When we launch the team, this is what's applied to it at startup. You can toggle any of these things on and off at a later point in time. There's a bunch of actions that handle that. Menu state uh, toggles, click bar toggles, key map toggles, map key toggles. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And it can get, again, pretty intricate, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. So key maps, likewise, you can unassign some key maps. But again, these are just default startups. So if you have multiple character sets, and we'll touch on this probably in the next video, um, if I configure things that way. Some people, they'll unassign certain key maps and then it'll be unassigned at startup, but if there's a key map toggle that turns these back on, and there is because the wizard creates this default toggle, um, these will get turned back on. Unless, of course, you come into the general settings and you set a key map white or black list. So that's just, I'm just gonna point that out. We may or may not be touching that, I'm not sure. Uh, click bars, virtual files, window layouts. We'll be talking about window layouts in a few moments. If you're a multi-PC user, you'll have also launch. You'll probably have a computer assigned to this as well. I don't, we won't be touch. I won't be touching any of that stuff. Uh, back to the general settings. And whenever I say the general settings, it's always like clicking the name of the thing in the upper left here on the lower left pane at the very upper left. That is the, those are the general settings. Regardless that there's a general tab here, these are just the general settings of whatever we're on. So general settings of the character set. You've got a handful of settings that mostly don't pertain to World of Warcraft, some of which do. Um, so like if you need to make changes to the GUI toggle hotkey, again, we'll be touching on this in the second video. If you're, if you need the inner space console hotkey, very few people do, but you will know it. If you do, here it is. It's set here. Video effects focus, uh, a hotkey to swap between windows. We'll touch on that when we hit a video effects uh, layout. If you want to hide the FPS indicator that Interspace provides in the upper left, that's where you do that. Disabled uh, icebox or management of Jamba or EMA teams. You can do that here. Um, that's not important. Here's one thing I'm going to disable. I'm going to disable the disable here. So this is, um, there's a little bit of a story involved here because I just do, I do want to just explain this. Iceboxer disables vertical sync by default. You saw me turn on vertical sync when we first were looking at the in-game video settings when we first launched the game client. So I said I was going to be using vertical sync, so I turned it on. And so if you want to do the same, you will have to disable this setting. The reason this setting exists is because it's been around forever and it's just kind of been the, def the default for a very long time. Ultimately, back in the day when people's computers weren't all that great, they were trying to multibox on them, they were really struggling. And sometimes people were trying to use vSync in game. Now, the problem with vSync is that if you have a specific frame, what it's going to try to do is try to uh, sync up the frame rate of the game client with the refresh rate of your display. So people with their, their 60 Hertz displays were trying to maintain 60 frames per second. And that's where I fall as well. But if you don't have a very really good computer and you really can't do that, what happens is when you enable vSync, it halves that. So 60 gets halved down to 30. And if you still can't maintain 30 properly, it gets halved again down to 15. And so people back in the day with their not so great computers were running into performance issues. And ultimately it was found that they just needed to disable vertical sync because they were getting screwed because their machine couldn't handle running all of those game clients. And so their, their vSync setting was having their frame rate. And so the headache was just solved by telling Icebox to just disable vertical sync globally on the, on the game clients that it launches. There's a little bit of story for why that is. But again, I'm using vSync. I like the buttery smoothness, smoothness that it brings to the game clients. And I know that my system can definitely handle the uh, syncing up the frame rate with the refresh rate. A little bit of technical stuff there, but again, um, just understand that it's there. Key map white and blacklist, I did show that. Variable keystrokes, not important. Virtual mapped keys, we won't be touching this here, but just understand that this is kind of a configuration panel for your character set. I do say that, I believe, in the in the standalone video. The only things we're going to be really touching for World of Warcraft, most of these, these top ones, they really don't mean much to you. Uh, interact with target, auto interact with target, and auto assist me. I did say we were going to be toggling auto assist later. This is where you would do that. These left... These assignments on the left-hand side point to assignments on the right-hand side, and they more or less kind of connect together. They're being connected. Uh, that's all I'll say about that until we finally get into that in the next video. So there is everything about the general settings. Again, there are slot-specific settings here. So if you click on a slot, you've got a switching tab, and you've, this is the uh, slot, slot 
activate, the slot activate hotkey is what it's called. So if the default is control alt number, where number is the slot number you want to switch to. So control alt one for one for slot one, control alt two for slot two, and so on and so forth. Now, if you do have an alt GR key, this is where this is important. If you have a G alt GR key and you told the wizard that, these will actually be unassigned for you because I believe alt GR is control and alt modifiers together. Again, this is if this isn't on your keyboard, this has nothing to do with you. You will know if you have an alt GR key, trust me. So just know that they will be unassigned. You'll just have to assign them to something yourself. And I'm going to do that exact thing now. I don't like the standard uh, settings. Uh, so I'm gonna assign them to F8 through F12. One other thing to point out here is that just to the right of it, there's this make this hotkey global setting. And it says restricts usable keys. So what that means is if we go into here, and we go into the drop down. Pretty much all of these keys with the global option enabled, pretty much all of these keys are just really standard uh, keyboard keys. And what this option does by making it global is it registers this key right here with the operating system. And if you have like a browser in front of your game clients or whatever else, maybe OBS in front of your game clients, and you just, if I was to just hit F8 with the global option enabled, it would bring. My, my slot one to the foreground. It would just bring it to the foreground. I wouldn't have to go find it behind all the other windows. So if you want that behavior, then keep this. However, some people want to use, like I mentioned earlier, Logitech keyboards have a bunch of G keys on them. Same thing with the mice, they have G keys on them. And there are certain devices that I, uh, Interspace natively supports. And that's generally Logitech G keys, some of the Corsair stuff, some of the SteelSeries stuff. Nothing that Razer makes though. There's a lot of manufacturers that implement the additional keys on their keyboards or mice in a very generic way. Different. I know it looks just like a key on the surface that you press, but under the hood, internally, they're integrated differently. So if a manufacturer like Razer takes the lazy approach of integrating, uh, of adding keys to their peripherals, they're just emulating keyboard buttons and they're not actually integrating a, 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 their own hardware button. That's a little technical, but here's what I'm getting at. If we uncheck this and we go back into this list, this dropdown, we can see there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. And I have a G502 mouse. So now we can see the G502 G keys are available to, to use as a slot activate hotkey. So just keep that in mind. If you do want to use your G keys or again, Corsair keyboards uh, or Steel Series, there may be some other manufacturers out there, even like um, X keys, I believe is the name of those, those manufacturer that just makes those blank, uh, you know, um, peripherals that you can just kind of program anything into those keys. I believe X keys are also supported, although they're a little pricey, but just again, keep that in mind. This is what the global option does. There's a little bit of explanation to that, but I think there's a lot of people that really like to use their G keys and their keyboard keys to do this. So let me just quickly make these changes and we'll talk about what these other settings below here do in just a second here. So F11. I know I said earlier, don't bind anything to F11 um, because it is being used as the follow hotkey. This is not the same. Ultimately, what I'm talking about is in game, do not bind anything to F11 with a modifier or backspace with a modifier. We'll kind of brush up on that a little bit more when we finally get in game. Although again, it is very difficult to talk about the FTL system. FTL modifiers are down here on every slot. FTL... Um, I should say this, it doesn't stand for faster than light. It doesn't stand for follow, follow the leader. It stands for focusless, targetless, leaderless. And it's a type of follow and assist system that was invented, I believe back in Wrath by um, a user by the name of Xanthor. I believe Xanthor, he was, he was big time back in the day. In fact, uh, I learned a lot from him as well. And so he kind of came up with this. I believe I'm going to give credit to him, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, I, was, I was very much a youngin back then. I don't really remember clearly how it all happened. But uh, anyway, um, ultimately what this does is by saying it's focusless is that you don't have to have a focus target before you follow or assist. Sometimes certain games depend on that. Uh, you don't need to have a target previous to following or assisting. And none of your, your team is leaderless in the sense that you don't have a leader per se. So sometimes with other ways to just write follow and assist macros, other softwares you can have, you can create very generic ways to follow and assist by just writing a follow and assist macro on all of your follow characters for just one lead character. And that more or less essentially creates a leader then, right? And when the leader dies, 
the others are kind of stuck. Whereas with this system here, um, you are leaderless. And we'll see that in game. We will see that in game. So keep that in mind. Uh, Multi-PC users, I'll just point this out here. If you're, you will be running multiple character sets. And so slot one, slot two, slot three, they're always bound to the same exact FTL modifiers. What you will need to do as a multi-PC user is go into each of your character sets other than the first one you're running um, and change the slot ID modifiers to something unique. You don't need to touch these if you don't use multiple PCs. But you have to think that PC one is always going to have a slot one and PC two is also going to have a slot one. So slot one on both machines, they're going to be assigned to left shift. They both can't be assigned to left shift. It breaks following assist on those slots. So you have to come in here and you have to choose just some random uh, unique modifiers. Again, you can't cross the streams, so to speak. You just don't just pick different modifiers. Um, there, there should be over 60 possible combinations. So I don't think you're going to run out of modifier uh, combinations. So there you go. Anyway, still in the switching, strap, uh, switching tab, we've got when I switch to this character, uh, and only when I use the above hotkey, if you want that, it does a mapped key. So it does the Jamba master map key. And if you use Jamba or EMA, this will switch your master character as seen by those add-ons. It'll switch your master character to the character that you switch to. Some people want that, some people don't. Some people are wondering why that's happening to their team. This is why that's happening because IS Boxer automatically applies this. Now, if you don't use Jamba or EMA like myself here, uh, this is harmless. It's harmless to leave this in place. You don't have to worry about getting rid of it at all. But if you do, you can just uncheck this option and it won't do anything. Uh, we will be using this option in the next video though for video effects layouts as well as some slot swap video setting stuff. So we will be touching this. Um, otherwise, if you do just have something set in game, like maybe you have a macro in game to do something, you could broadcast this keystroke right here instead and you can set a keystroke here. And there are two or three additional settings down here. I don't even know if these still work anymore. They're very old settings. I have no idea. And I probably wouldn't recommend any of these down here at all. I have no idea if they still work. If you, if you try these and they don't work, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So I'm just going to leave it as default. Performance tab, this is good stuff right here. Now, this is where we're going to be creating a custom CPU core assignment. I did mention that earlier. I, uh, I personally have a 10 core, 20 thread chip. So you'll see 20 threads listed here. It's, it says CPU cores, but I'm not going to get into the technical details. Um, so ultimately, we're going to create our own. But if you want to do something custom yourself, you can come in here and select or deselect. Uh, which cores are assigned. You can also manually tweak per, and again, these are per slot settings here, right? So if you make changes on this slot and you come over to this slot, you know, it's still selected. So same thing with the, uh, the limiter options, 6030 was what we set it to. And so that's what we've got there. Now, um, there's a little bit of a bug here. If you're still on a slot and you are on the performance tab, when you run the CPU strategy wizard from the menu or if you actually just right click on the character set itself, you can also just run the CPU strategy wizard or window layout wizard as well. But if you're on this slot here and you can see the CPU core assignment, uh, it won't actually, the wizard won't properly apply the slot assignment, at least not right now. Maybe Lax will fix that, although he is pretty much focused on the next iteration of IS Boxer. There's a lot of quirks in IS Boxer and that is just what it is at this point. And like I said, Lax is working on the next version of IS Boxer as I record this, right now, as I record this. So we're gonna click off of the slot for a moment. We're gonna go back to the CPU strategy wizard. Um, I'm gonna pick our character set here, move this up so I can spread this out. Okay, so this is the exact same step that we saw in the wizard, right? Uh, what we can do, now here's something that trips people up. I wanna point this out. If we set this to 6015 and I set this to round robin, so we're gonna make those changes, we're gonna hit finish. This applies it to our character set. If I go back into a slot now, we can see that round robin, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are our new core assignments. This is what round robin is. And you can see why I don't really like this setting because again, I said that the game client, specifically World of Warcraft here, can use at least four threads nicely, if not up to six. Now, it is still a very heavily single threaded game because that's generally what happens with just MMOs and the way they have to process information. But you can use four to six threads pretty comfortably with... Um, uh, with World of Warcraft. So you can see that we're only restrict we're restricting every single game client, every slot, which is going to be a game client once we launch the games, to just two threads. For me, that's a little too restrictive. I just don't 
I just don't feel like this is a good option, but some people say that this option works well for them. So just keep that in mind and try things out. But for me, with 20 threads, there's 10 of these that are just completely untouched, right? Completely untouched. Now, here's what I do want to point out. We did assign round robin and we did assign 6015. Now, if we come back into the wizard, the only difference is that if you run it from here, it just pre selects the character set for you. So you just start at this step. Here's what confuses people. It's back to 6030. And it's back to select all CPUs with every window. That's because the wizard only starts up with default settings. It does not read your character set. It does not read what's already available on your character set. Another quirk with Icebox, it just doesn't read it. And it can't tell you what you have assigned. Because you have to think about it. If I had some super custom CPU core assignment, what the hell would this dropdown say? The drop down is not going to make any sense of that, right? So it just loads up with defaults. Just understand that it's like that. Some people are like, they, they see that and they're like, it's not applying the settings. It's not applying the settings. It is applying the settings. If you go look at it on the slot and the performance tab under each slot, you will see that the settings are applied. So anyway, we're going to go back to 6030 and I'm actually going to choose select no CPUs because this unassigns everything and it's easier for me to start by just creating a custom assignment. So once, you know, nothing is assigned here anymore. So I have 20 threads and I have five game clients. That means I can dedicate four threads per game client and they've got free reign of those threads then. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set this to all four. And if you, again, if you have a high core count CPU, you will likely want to do this because if you have enough cores and you're trying to run enough game clients, each game client, is, you know, the operating system and the game client, they're both going to be trying to balance the load of the game clients. And there's going to be a lot of switching uh, I guess it's called context switching, I guess, across all of the cores, all of the threads that are available. And what it can do is it can cause a performance degradation just in the OS overall, as it tries to do all of these things with all these different game clients across all these different cores. So as long as you restrict it to just a few cores or threads, whatever, you will avoid that. You will avoid that. And that's why I really like to do this. So we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, if I can click properly, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then of course the final four. So now I've dedicated four threads to every single slot and I know that there won't be uh, any issues whatsoever. Again, this is what I run on my everyday setup. Now, just to be fair, you know, if you want to just overlap some threads here and there, that's totally fine. The problem is when you overlap 20 threads or 32 threads and every game client has access to all the threads, they're going to be thrown all over the place. That's what I mean. Um, again, it's kind of a technical thing, but just understand that you may need to run a, a custom CPU core assignment. So we've been spending a ton of time in character sets. We're pretty much done. Variable keystrokes, you don't have to touch this at all. This is preset by the wizard. We also do not use this if we use the add-on. If you're using a non-add-on setup, non-World of Warcraft add-on setup, you will likely, one of the setups for following us is do use this, but we don't. We do not. We do not use this with the add-on. Streaming integration is deprecated. Not important. We don't use that anymore. Under game helpers, we have a World of Warcraft section. I'm not gonna jump, I'm not gonna spend too much time here. This is where the macros are stored. We'll be creating some macros in the next video. Nothing too crazy. There's a standalone wiki page and a standalone video. The video is very old, but it still handles exactly this aspect of Iceboxer hasn't changed in all of that time. So it's pretty much exactly the same, the video, even though it's old. So you can click on the assist macro and I'll just show, it says it has an FTL variable here. If you look at the, the macro page on the Icebox Wiki, there's a list of several variables that you can use to help write some macros for you. So this FTL variable, if you go to the preview tab, you will see exactly what the FTL variable does. So we have the assist command and then we have the FTL variable. So everything after the slash assist is auto populated by Iceboxer based on our character set. The FTL modifiers we've applied to the slots of our character set, which are auto applied by the wizard, unless you're a multi PC user, remember that. But this is a very long macro. It looks very confusing, but this is, uh, it's 100% a macro that exists and works in the World of Warcraft environment. And it's how we handle follow and assist. And it's pretty crazy. And this is, you look at this, you might be scratching your head. This doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't unless there's like a, a much deeper explanation, which I'm just not going to give here because it's good, probably just going to confuse everybody listening. But just understand that the preview tab, if you see these variables, you can look and the uh, most of this stuff, this FTL stuff, it's all tied to the focus list, target list, leader list setup here. The other thing I'll point out is the invite team has more, more type of variables in place. Ultimately, what this does is when you export, it will write... In this case, we only have five slots and this is the default macro. If you have more than five slots, you 
will need to make changes to this yourself. I, I'm not going to be doing that, but other people have. It writes five different macros per character. Per character, they all get their own macro. So it writes five different macros. When we press Shift-Alt-I, which is our invite team hotkey, a macro assigned to that particular character will fire off. So if we, if we, fire, if we use Shift-Alt-I from the character in slot one, they won't try to invite themselves is essentially what this is doing. They'll just try to invite slots two through five. That's it. If we fire off the macro from slot three, they're not going to invite themselves. They're going to invite slots one, two, four, and five. It's all just written for you under the hood. You don't have to write macros. That's, that's the thing about this. That's the thing about this here. So I don't mean to confuse anyone, but this is where macros are stored. Again, there's more research to be done if you want to get more in depth on this. Most people don't jump into this right away, but it's there. It's available. Begin to learn, begin to explore. It's all about that. We're going to be skipping menus. We'll be playing with menus a little bit once we get into the game, just a little bit. Uh, variable keystrokes, like I said, there is a variable keystrokes tab here. We don't touch it. There's a variable keystrokes tab in the general settings of the character set. We don't touch it. There's a variable keystrokes tab under the slot itself. We don't touch it. But there is a uh, there is a global variable keystrokes tab, which is different than the rest of them. And we do touch things in here. So right off the bat, um, I don't use WASD to move. I use ESDF. So I'm going to make some changes here. Again, this is my own personal thing that we're going through here. So ES. Um, turn left and turn right are actually the, the, the slow keyboard turn moves. So those are bound to left and right on my, on my bindings in game. And then move left is strafe left and move right is strafe right. So these are my keys. Again, I use ESDF. If you simply use WASD, then those keys are probably fine and they're already set for you. Uh, if you use a different key for jump, assign it here. The rest of these we can ignore other than interact with target, which we'll be coming back to once we get into the game world. So there's that. Other than that, I understand that there's something else bound to F11 here. There's something else bound to backspace. These are not conflicting keybinds. You don't need to unbind these. These have zero effect on World of Warcraft when using the IS Boxer add-on. That's all I can say about that. Window layouts. We're almost done here. Window layouts. Um, yes. So like I said, you can't actually make any changes, real changes. You can't drag the regions around in the window layout uh, section of the wizard. So here you come into the regions editor and you can make those changes. But before we get in here, let's just look at the general settings. So again, the general settings is the name of the thing in the lower left pane here. We got a handful of general settings on how the swapping is affected, whether you want it to always swap, whether you want it to swap only with a slot activated hotkey. Those were the per slot control alt one, control alt two that I changed to F8 through F12. Only when I press the uh, activate current window hotkey, which is actually right here. So ultimately, if you set it to one of these two, you can click in the windows, the smaller windows, and they won't swap to the bigger region. They'll stay where they're at. Some people like that behavior. Some people don't. Um, you can also, when you have these enabled, you can also enable the focus follows mouse option. That just means it's actually built into windows. Um, that means if you just move the mouse over a particular window, it'll just bring it into focus. So you won't actually have to waste a click. It'll just automatically come into focus. These are things that you would have to play with and figure out. Of course, when you do mess around with window layouts, some of the settings will require that you um, completely shut down the character set and relaunch it. Sometimes certain games, World of Warcraft is pretty forgivable in this sense, but certain games, it doesn't really like their windows being played with in real time. So you will have to shut down and re and relaunch them. It's just kind of a side effect of the way that certain games, every game works differently. Every game works differently. But World of Warcraft, again, is pretty forgivable. You shouldn't have to relaunch your character set when playing with a bunch of these settings. Although if something doesn't look like it's working, you may want to do that. So um, I'm going to keep this always for game windows, and that disables that. Again, here's some clicking behavior. When you first click in the region, do what it normally does, treat it like any other click, or ignore the click. Try, try those out to see what they're like. Um, if you want some rollover options, I don't even know. I've never used this. I've never, I can't even tell you if this still works. I don't even know. I, no idea. So use instant window swapping. I didn't point this out during the wizard, but it is an option along the right-hand side. I do really suggest leaving this enabled. This, this right here, it says synchronizes game resolutions. So if we go into the regions tab, we can see that the big region is rendering at a size of 2560 by 1200. And because it's a basic wizard generated layout and we have instant swapping enabled, that means every region, even though this is a small region, it's smaller, it'll be scaled down when we launch our character set and you can, you'll see that, it is still internally rendering at 2560 by 1200. 
And the reason for this is because this helps with mouse broadcasting and it helps with uh, swapping as well. So if you uncheck the instant swapping uh, checkbox, this, this region will run at 2560 by 1200, but these regions will all run at 512 by 240. So you will actually save on a bunch of resources that will be eaten up by your computer. You'll save on a bunch of those resources by, render, by, by, by rendering these background windows at that smaller resolution. But this throws off, this not only throws off mouse broadcasting, it also changes the size of the UI. So you can actually offset mouse broadcasting with differently scaled windows if you go into your repeater profile and you change the cursor positioning mode to one of the two scaled options. Generally, I would use scaled from center, but again, it's not perfect. It's just a scaled setting. I wouldn't touch anything else in here, although if you are an, a multi-PC user, then allow active window cursor to move via broadcast is a multi-PC setting you will want to enable. Otherwise, I don't touch any of these things whatsoever. Back in the window layout section. So you have to think that even if you're scaling the mouse cursor, you're running different resolutions and you're scaling the mouse cursor, you have to think that the smaller windows, their UI is going to be positioned differently than the bigger region's UI. So it's something to keep in mind when you're mismatching a bunch of things here. So likewise, if you wanted to just change this up and you wanted to put, you know, if, if you wanted to, uh, I did that a little prematurely, but, um, you know, if you want to change this around here, you can do that just like this. You can drag the regions. We've got multiple monitors. Again, you can drag the regions wherever you want. The thing is though, I do have to put these back. The thing is when you start changing the sizes of the regions, you start making manual changes to the sizes of the regions. If you don't maintain the aspect ratio of each region, you can once again throw off mouse broadcasting. So the wizard will generally always try to keep, uh, will always try to maintain aspect ratio. I don't know of any time that it doesn't use that, even though it is a setting on the right-hand side of the wizard itself. I don't think changing it to false actually changes it to false. That's, I'm not about to test that, but I don't think it actually works that way. What I'm getting at here, when it comes to aspect ratios, if you're going to be making custom changes to the sizes of your of your regions, you can you know make this smaller and whatnot. Um, this is 2560. I don't want to lose this by 1200. Drag this over. If you start making manual changes to these things, you will have to do math. <laughs> do you want to do math? Most people don't want to do math in order to maintain an aspect ratio, but there are aspect ratio calculators on the internet out there. So you could probably just cut some corners that way. For example, again, 2560 by 1200. If we look at 512 by 240, if we multiply 512 by five and 240 by five, we get 2560 by 1200. So it is a multiple, the, the lower, the smaller resolutions are multiples, vertical and horizontal of these numbers here. This means we're maintaining aspect ratio. Just things to keep in mind. And finally, if you're making changes to this and you are tweaking some of your settings or um, maybe you're looking for help and all of a sudden someone says they talk about the regions tab, they talk about the slots tab, or they talk about the swap groups tab, this is where those are. Just know that there's three tabs over here. I'm not sure we're going to be touching any of this stuff. This is where you can start really kind of fine tuning your window layout. But uh, I'm going to be using pretty standard stuff because that's just how I do things. So that's pretty much it. Click bars, if we had any, they would be here. Action target groups get, uh, they're a little advanced. We'll be dealing with them in the coming videos. Just know that these two, the follow and the combat ATGs, ATG is short for action target group. These ATGs are created by the wizard and your characters are put into them automatically. They should all be in here. Please don't remove them out of here, at least not right now. Action timer groups, I've never dealt with this. I, this is one of the sections of Iceboxer I've never ever touched or played with. And then finally, virtual files. I did say Iceboxer was going to be making copies of certain files, specifically the config.wtf, or if you're using the launcher, it's the battle.net.config file, as well as this is a registry entry that is uh, stores some additional information. It kind of says what it does over here. I don't know what's stored in there, but Iceboxer is set up. If you use the wizard for World of Warcraft, these will automatically be here. These will already be here for you. And so if we click on this and we click on one of these characters, we can see that in addition to the, just the standard config.wtf, there's this character one inserted in here. And that's our character name. We go to character two, there's character two, character three, and so on. So here's what happens. Here's what's, here's what people don't know. So under the hood, there's all those, these, these things that are applied to a character, right? If we right click and we go to make a copy of a character, say we want to make a new character, we're going to make character 06. 
everything looks innocent, right? You're like, oh, I just made a copy. We renamed it. We're going to add this to our character set. We're going to get in game. What can happen is that when you, well, what will happen is when you make a copy of a character, everything in the lower left pane gets copied. So ATGs get copied. Um, any other per character settings, which you generally won't have as a new as a new user, but ultimately the virtual files get copied as well. So if we go down to back to virtual files, we now have character six down here. But if we look at it, it copied character. Did we make a copy of character two? We made okay, whatever I clicked on. I thought I I thought I right clicked on character one, but whatever. We made a copy of the character, but it doesn't have the right virtual file assigned to it. And so what you will find out is that. You'll log in one character and you'll enter in that login information. If this character resides on a different account, when you then log in the other character, because they share the same file now, you'll be thrown off and you'll see that the login information is wrong and you'll be like, what the hell's going on? It's because you copied a character and the virtual file copied along with it. So if you're copying characters, you're going to want to come in here and make those changes to the names of the virtual files. And again, if you're using the launcher, the same happens here. The same happens here. What can help is if you just run the virtual file wizard and use the World of Warcraft stuff and kind of reassign it to your characters. Um, I won't need to do that because I probably won't be copying many characters, but, uh, or maybe I will. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen in the second and third videos. Anyway, that's everything to do with Ice Boxer at the surface level. And so I'm just going to collapse these areas and, um, Maybe one final thing to point out before we export and get in game with our with our character set, because I did say this was a these were character set assignments down here. Now the key maps know, the menus know you can make changes. But if you want to make changes to say like the window layout, so you can just go into window layouts. So I'm just gonna make a copy and just call this copy of druids, right? Oh, okay. Just call this druids too. Another quirk with iOS Boxer. So now we can click, hold, and drag and drop this in the lower left pane. And we'll watch the window layout. It just says Druids right now, right? When I release, now it says Druids 2. I've now assigned the Druids 2 window layout to this character set, but I don't want that. So we'll put Druids back and we'll delete this Druids 2 copy. Same thing with characters. If you want to swap a character out in your uh, list of slots here, you would same way, click, hold, and drag. I'm going to take this, but instead of just dropping it anywhere in the lower left pane, you will want to drop it over a particular slot. So right now, character three is in slot three. Let's put him in slot one, just like that. Character one disappears, but of course you cannot assign the same character twice in the same character set. So this one obviously was removed, but we're going to put that back. So slot three, character three can go back into slot three. That unpopulate slot one, we'll put character one back in slot one. So that's how you change out characters. We'll be doing that in the next uh, video or two. Some people say this doesn't work for them. I have no idea why click holding and dragging to a particular slot would not work for you unless, unless again, there's maybe some pebcac involved. So, <laughs> so that's it for eyes boxing, man. Are, are we, are we still with me here? Are we still with me? So what happens here at this point, we've got our settings set in place. We're going to go to file. Anytime you make changes in eyes boxer, you have to export to inner space in order for that to be in order for those changes to be to take to take effect. So uh, other under file, we can go to export to inner space. Also, again, if you're clearing your profile, file clear will put you back into an absolute clean slate. However, if you've made a bunch of custom changes in Icebox, you may want to do a file clear and then restart it to flush out the cache of uh, whatever may be uh, in memory of Iceboxer. Because sometimes, again, quirky things can happen if you don't restart it after doing a clear. But right now we're going to export all to inner space or Again, I did say get used to using shortcuts. So I'm actually going to use control E. When you first launch characters, you're going to be presented with this information. Uh, depending on the game though, certain games don't have this, these, these uh, alerts. World of Warcraft does because we made a bunch of changes. We have limiters in place. We have our 60, 30 frame rate limiter in place. And we have um, just a general uh, change that it wants to make to the display mode. What I suggest is you say yes to these changes. It'll make these changes. This is what's happening in the in the config.wtf files that are being copied. So we'll say yes to that. We'll get the successful export message. And then from there, we can minimize uh, Iceboxer and we're going to right click on inner space again. And now we have these character set options. We don't launch from the top. You do not click the top game and launch from any of the default profiles. Right there, this is bypassing IS Boxer. 
We created a character set in Icebox. And if you want to launch specific slots, you can do that. I'm going to launch the entire character set. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to let this load up. And uh, I'm going to take another quick break. And then we'll get in game and we'll, we'll have some fun. Okay, so I ran into a bit of technical difficulty with this portion of the video, and so we're redoing it. I'm just letting you know, it doesn't look any different than it would normally, but I'm just letting you know in case someone is watching this under a microscope and you're like, hey, the lighting has changed just a little bit. It probably has, but you know what? Still got my rugged good looks, still wearing the red shirt. Here we go, folks. So we launched our character set. This is the window layout we chose. Uh, when we first start up, I, I generally like to just hit my slot, activate hotkeys, and I kind of just like to cycle through my windows real quick. It just kind of, in case anything is stuck, sometimes the windows do get stuck, depending on the type of layout you've got. It just helps to kind of get it unstuck, I guess. It's a good, uh, it's a good way to think about it. Uh, we're going to do a few things. To, we're going to change a few things here before jumping into the game. Uh, first of all, if you did not, if you didn't want to uh, delete your config WTF and redo all of that, you can obviously still, you know, turn on repeater and go through the settings here and make changes to them. This is like the last minute before we finally get into the game and it starts putting some real load on your machine. Uh, of course, we, you, know, you can go through all the options and see what we've got. These are all set. One thing I didn't mention before when we were in here is the sound in background settings. So World of Warcraft has this option here and I did, uh, I did have it unchecked, I believe, uh, from before. So this is what I do suggest. If you do have sound and background turned on, you may be hearing all of your game clients right now. So I would select, uh, I would suggest unchecking this so that you don't hear the sound in the background. However, if you're playing a game that doesn't um, have such an option, um, the character set here in IS Boxer has mute background game window audio and unmute foreground window audio. So you can use that if your game client doesn't already have an option very similar to that. However, just know that this uses the Windows volume mixer in, win in the Windows operating system, uses the volume mixer. And so what can happen is you can find yourself booting up a game client outside of Interspace, and it will be muted through the volume mixer. And that's because sometimes that happens. Sometimes that gets left over from just the way that when you exit a character set, that, that final game client as it exits is sometimes seen as being in the background. And so it gets muted the split second as it's closing. Just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> and so all of our settings look great. They look, uh, they look good. And uh, actually, I guess here, again, we can just kind of cycle through the windows and they're all the same, right? And they should be all the same simply because I did say that uh, Icebox is going to be creating copies of our config.wtf, and here they are right here next to the original. That's where they will always be. Whenever a virtual file is made, it is always made next to the original. So now we've got these, and if you need to make changes on a per character config.wtf basis, this is where you would do that. So it saves all those settings. Keep bouncing around here. So, um, one thing that I also could have mentioned before, when you if you deleted your config.wtf originally, we could have actually logged into the game client and that would have been saved and then copied across all of the other game clients as well. And that's just another little tidbit of information. So here you're seeing the window layout. We chose the whole leave a hole option. We can see as we switch to a different slot, it leaves a hole. So this would be slot one slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, right? And this is an easy visual representation to know what slot you're on. Other layouts don't have this easy, this hole that is left over. Sometimes they just change out the, 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 um, the regions with each other. They just cycle the regions between the two locations of them instead of leaving a hole. So when I talk about logging a character, uh, logging the account in, you know, logging a specific account in on a specific slot, this makes it a lot easier. You know you're on slot one. You know you're on slot two. You know you're on slot four. Whereas with another type of layout, you may not have that information that may not be apparent. And as a new user, this is really helpful, I think. So one final change we're going to make, I just like to make this change uh, when we're doing these types of tutorials, um, is to this toggles menu. When you, when you load your character set, you will see this toggles menu. If you don't see this toggles menu, you've either incorrectly launched the character set so instead of choosing a character set, maybe you launch the default profile, which would not show this. Or you may have something also trying to tie in and hook into the game client that may mess with um, IS Boxer's 
overlays. So this is an overlay that is created by Icebox, or it's created by Innerspace, but uh, something may be trying to hook into the game client as well, which messes that up. Or you may be using, uh, you may want to try a different graphics API. So if you're using 11, you may want to try 11 Legacy. If you're using 11 Legacy, you may want to tw try 12. Just cycle between them and try them out. If you're playing a game that doesn't have that option, then it could be one of the other previous things I just mentioned. So with that, we are going to move this toggles menu. And um, I'd like to move that to the center of the screen and make it a little bit bigger. We're also going to hide the FPS indicator uh, because it's a little lonely up there in the corner. If you want that, though, it, it's useful to have so you can kind of know what FPS you're getting. Uh, World of Warcraft does have a built-in FPS indicator, so it's not a big deal. But if we come down to the menu section, we look at the toggles menu because that is what this is. Again, if we look at the character set, the only menu apply to it right now is the toggles menu. So that is the, the key map and repeater toggle menu. You'll get, a, you'll get a better shot of it once we make it bigger. So we click on the toggles menu. We can see the assignments here and the general settings of the toggles menu itself. We can see the assignments, the template, the hotkey set, the button set. Uh, I don't want to distract you with all my images. If you see here though, we've got the templates, we've got the hotkey sets, we've got the button set. So if you need to make changes to any of these and we will make a change to the template, we'll do that here. Right now though, the starting position actually yeah, so the starting position is here. Let's make a change to the template itself, actually. So we are going to make the buttons bigger. So instead of 48 by 48, I'm going to go 72 by 72. And you can see all the other settings here, the margin, the width and the height, the rows and the columns, um, the opacity, whether there's a border or not, the amount of buttons. Play with these, right? Play with these. If you're trying to mess with, uh, if you're trying to create your own types of overlays, you're trying to, to edit the existing overlays, just play with these settings, export, see what happens. And then, you know, revert those changes, try again. It's all about feeling things out here. So we made it 72 by 72. And that makes the frame width and height, the, the, the total width and height of the, but, the two buttons we have here um, together, 150 by 76. So I want to put this menu in the middle of our screen. So we need to do some math here. So let's fire up the, uh, the calculator. Windows. So... Uh, the horizontal resolution is 2560. And we're going to divide that by two to get the center point. The center point is 1280, right? So if we just stick this at 1280 right now in the starting position, we don't want to do that. But if we do that, um, it actually anchors from the left. So instead of being in the, we want to be in the center of the two buttons. So the center of the two buttons, it's 150 across and the center is going to be 75. That's the center point of this two button menu. So Instead of using 1280, we're also going to shave 75 off of that. That's going to give us 1205. That is the center point of where we want to be. I'm sorry if the math was a little confusing. Um, if you don't want to do that, if you don't know how to do that, just type in some numbers and see where it ends up and keep, keep exporting and changing the numbers until you kind of get it where you want it to be, right? So uh, again, we made it bigger. We changed the starting position. So when we export, we minimize here. We could see now the buttons are bigger and they're in the center. One other setting I do want to change here, as you can see, there is an always on top mode that is that is currently present, and it's a little uh, it's a little awkward to work with at times. I don't really like it, especially when I'm bouncing in and out of Ice Boxer a lot. So in the window layout itself, I should have made this change uh, earlier. But in the way, window layout itself, whoops, okay, wanted this, nope, this right here, I want this. So per region, there is this always on top mode setting, and you'll see there's actually three settings, always off, always on no matter what, or only on if a game window is in foreground. Now, the default setting is on if a game window is in foreground. That sounds like the best setting to use, but as you saw, Iceboxer still got caught behind the windows, and I don't really like that. So I'm going to change this to off on all of my regions. You can do the same if you want. Just know that when you turn it off like this, you may have other things laying on top of your, your smaller windows at times and stuff like that. So you may want to just cycle through the windows. Anyway, uh, the quick way to do this is to triple click in here. You can just click in here, use the mouse wheel, one click to focus, double click to change the setting. Most of these settings that have drop downs like this can be just changed with a double click. So click, scroll wheel down, cl click to focus, double click to change the setting, scroll wheel down, triple click, scroll wheel down, triple click. So a quick way, you'll learn these shortcuts as you just continue to use IS Boxer. And so when we scroll through all of these, we can see that that setting, uh, always on top setting is off now. So we can export once again. You get used to exporting, get used to all of that. So now 
we won't run into any issues. I'm just going to cycle through the window. So let us log in at this point. We may hit some disconnection issues. Sometimes that happens. It's been happening the last few uh, weeks ever since some recent patches have come out. And um, so anyway, you can see the buttons here. The left button is the key maps toggle. If it's lit up, key maps are enabled. If it's if it's not lit up, if it's desaturated, key maps are off. Same thing with the right hand button here. This is for repeater. We turn it on, it's lit up. We can see a mouse cursor in every window or you turn it off and the mouse cursor repeating goes away. Uh, again, that is just mouse and keyboard though. That is the default setup. And of course I did have, you know, you can use shift alt M, shift alt R if you left those. Uh, I have the, again, the button on my mouse that just allows me to press it for repeater. And if I hold down control, like I had show, like I talked about earlier, um, if I hold down control and hit this, then um, I turn on key maps as well. Give me just a moment to turn on a, a program I realize I didn't have turned on, which is the uh, mouse highlighting thing. Okay, much better. So now when I hold down control, you can actually see the modifiers that get held down on my cursor now, right? So there we go. Fantastic. So anyway, uh, when I, I said when typing into a login uh, field, the, your password, any type of chat box, you want to turn off key maps. So disable those. And when we're logging in, I'm logging into the same email account here. So all of my WoW accounts are under the same Battle.net email account. There's benefits to that. Everything that is a account wide gets shared, uh, gets, gets shared across your retail accounts. So mounts, heirlooms, transmog stuff, all of that gets shared, right? So if you're logging into multiple game clients, then don't turn on repeater. Uh, I mean, if you're logging into multiple emails, then don't turn on repeater because that doesn't make sense. But I can do this, so uh, we will just log in. And then tab down to the password field. And then of course, remember account name, we wanna do this so that this is saved in the per character virtualized config.wtf files. This is just saved on disk. Icebox is not saving this internally or anything like this. This information is already saved on disk by the game client. So uh, with that in place, we can, uh, and again, if you just wanna check to, to make sure that what you're typing is, is being sent to the game windows properly, you can see it's all the same. We'll turn repeater back on, we will uh, log in. And we're going to be prompted for, if you, again, are using the same email, you're going to be prompted for the uh, sub-account name here. So uh, for me, it's a little out of order. It may be out of order for you as well. You can technically reorder this list in your config.wtf file, but you're in here in so infrequently, it doesn't really matter for me at least. So I know that this first account is WoW3. Again, this is where leave a hole comes in handy. So account four, account five, account six, and account seven. So we'll log in for just a moment. I'm gonna to wait to see if we get any disconnects and then we'll move forward. Okay, so it looks like we're good. We did get a disconnect. I'm just making sure it, because it, it interrupts when I'm talking here, when, it, when that goes down. So anyway, the first thing you're gonna see, again, if you deleted your config.wtf, you may see this, or even after patches, you will see this, this pop up here. Um, I've got some add-ons here. We're gonna load anyway. Um, we're gonna change realms though, because if we're on Illyria, this is a mage team I might be bringing in. Sort by name, and then Illyria is right here at the top. So we'll log in, we'll get hit with the character creation screen. Again, we do need to check add-ons, but we can't actually check them before we create a character. So instead of sitting around for 25 minutes while I figure out what I wanna create, I do have some notes here. Uh, so we're gonna be creating female night elf druids. And uh, again, have repeater enabled. You can see me doing this all at the same time. We click on customize. And now I do have some value saved here, 71239. So this is where it really helps if you're doing like same class or, or same race at least, and you kind of want to make them look the same. And it's kind of like a, a theme with multi boxes. Sometimes you make them look the same. Sometimes you just change the hair color between all, all of your characters or the, 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 uh, maybe the markings for... Um, uh, night elves or maybe the horns for, you know, like a demon hunter or Draenei or whatever. But uh, it's, you know, you either scroll all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. And then of course you just scroll down and you can just click as long as you kind of have the idea and what you want to make, uh, which I do here, seven, one, two, three, nine. You can see me just kind of shooting through this quickly. And then nine at the bottom. 
And uh, there are our druids. If I turn off repeater and we just kind of cycle through them, double check that we made all the right choices, they all look the same. And that's what I want. So uh, one other thing that's really kind of useful when you're when you're a multi-boxer, when you've got a window layout like this, when you've got multiple game clients up, the thing that the default game client ever since they made this new setup here, and I guess even the old setup still suffers from this as well, it's really, really almost impossible to uh, to test and compare um, certain, certain hairstyles, certain faces, uh, and whatnot, right? Because if you want to compare, if you're on one and you want to compare five, well, that's down below the list here. You can't, you can't see it, but um, you understand, right? You have to come down the list, but if you want to, okay, I'll hide the camera. Fine, we'll hide the camera. You got to come down the list but you can't go beyond the third one, right? You can't see beyond two. So if you wanna, even if you click down, it still changes the face and you can't compare five to one very well. So when you do this, you can have five selected here and you could just bounce back and forth between one and five and double check to see if they were kind of standing in a better spot there. No, she moves around a lot. So, but anyway, it's something to keep in mind that you can more easily compare faces and hairstyles and markings and whatnot. Um, when you're when you're multiboxing or when you've got a window layout up like this. This is why I like to create my characters at this stage. It makes it just a lot easier than logging in one account at a time and creating characters. So um, again, key maps are off, repeaters off. We're gonna type in our character names here. So Mirandis and Shadra. Hopefully no one has taken these names since I deleted them. I doubt it though. Kina, Teldara, and Versalia. Okay, so these are our five druids. We want to check the add-ons now. This is important before we log in. So, um, IS Boxer, uh, we're going to keep loot assist disabled. It's um, it's not it's not required anymore. Actually, they just recently fixed the looting issue that was with the game client for an extended period of time. For several years, it was broken, and they just fixed it. So I was going to show how to fix that, but we don't need to do that now. So anyway, IS Boxer will, uh, when you export, as long as you're pointing inner space at a proper WoW.exe, a valid uh, World of Warcraft um, path that has WoW.exe in there, and you've chosen, remember on... Uh, Step one of the wizard, we get to choose what game we were creating our character set and creating everything for, which is World of Warcraft on step one. And so as long as you choose World of Warcraft on step one and you're pointing interspace at a proper wow.exe file, this will be created when you export from IS Boxer. And every time you export, it will be refreshed as well. So this isn't something you download from Curse or WoW Interface or anywhere else. You get it from IS Boxer. IS Boxer creates it itself. And uh, there's, there's some other criteria that needs to be met. Most people won't even run into this problem, but if you don't, for some reason, have this IS Boxer add-on, there is a wiki page dedicated to the WoW add-on that will tell you the whole list of everything that is required in order for this to be created. So there you go. But we want this enabled on all of our characters. Every single character should have this enabled. We're going to hit OK. I think that's everything. So let's jump into the game world. We're going to get hit with the cutscene as well. We still have repeater enabled right now because I want to skip the cutscene. So we, we lost the mouse cursor, but we hit escape. The dialogue box comes up on all of them. I do want to skip the, uh, the cutscene. So right away, um, what we could have done, remember I was talking earlier about how we, we created generic character names for our characters in IS Boxer, and we were going to fix them after we made those characters. So before logging in, we could have fixed this, but I wanted to log in and show what happens when you actually log the wrong character into the wrong window or something along those lines. So we every single character got hit with this problem with this pop-up here. It says, character in wrong window, Ice Boxer expected character 01, but got Mirandus. Some functionality may not work correctly. And the functionality it's, it's generally talking about are the follow and assist, um, maybe even the invite macro as well. So everything related to the add-on that has to do with following, assisting, targeting, things like that, won't normally won't work correctly if you don't put the right character into the right slot. So, and again, every character sees that. So I'm going to just accept that. The other thing I want to show here before we fix that is if we go into system, advanced, and we increase... Uh, that's probably actually perfect. We increase the size of the UI so we can actually see it. If we look, we can see that Iceboxer, the add-on, when enabled, will print out a whole bunch of information. If you have any conflicting keybinds, which 
which um, we'll talk about, I guess, when we're, we're going over follow and assist. But if you have any conflicting keybinds, they'll be printed out here. And any ice boxer warnings like expected character one, but got Miranda. So again, if you log the wrong character into the wrong slot and you just, you just ignore that pop-up for some reason, it will also be printed out here in what the ice boxer add-on prints out for you. So let's fix that problem with our character names here. So one other thing I'm going to do when I, when I, this is just the display name of the characters for Iceboxer. So I'm actually going to denote the, the account that they're on as well. This doesn't necessarily mean much to you if you don't, don't if you only have a few characters, but as we build upon our characters here, I did say we're going to have more characters um, in for the second and third videos. It does kind of help as you build upon like, you know, 25, 30 characters you may have. And when you're swapping them in and out of your character sets, which you may be doing, it's easier just to kind of know that, you know, this one is on account one and she belongs in slot one of the character set. At least that's how I handle this. So, and again, zero one Miranda is not her actual name in game. So we do have to type in her actual name here. Let's hope I type these in correctly. I'm kind of at a weird angle as I do this here. So what's her name? Shadra. So we'll put Shadra down here. And 03, kinda, kinda here. And this is just a kind of a good example to show you that you don't necessarily need to have your characters created ahead of time. You just come back in here and fill in, you know, fill in the generic names you gave them. Tell Dara. <laughs> it's a little small on my screen. Um, that's why I'm that's that's why I'm zooming in for you guys because it's uh, I understand that I've had complaints in the past where people com they really can't see a lot of some of the stuff I'm doing in Iceboxer, so that's why I'm zooming in and out on this one. So as long as I typed everyone's name in correctly, this should work. So when you do change names here, we are going to export again. We've made that change, but instead, since we changed names of a character, or even if you change names of your character set. Iceboxer, it's not going to refresh like it had in the past. Remember all the exporting we were doing before, things were refreshing. Nothing refreshed this time, and that's because we changed the character names. And again, that all, this also doesn't refresh if you change the character set name. What you need to do is you need to come down into your uh, Iceboxer, uh, right-click menu again, and relaunch your character set. And when you do that, that will refresh everything. And now... One final step, once we finally get all of this done, if you're already in game, if you're still on the character selection screen, you don't need to do this, but if you're in game and you're changing characters around, you will want to disable key maps, turn on repeater and just type slash reload. And this reloads the user interface. And now we don't have any pop-ups on any of our characters. We don't have any problems here, no warnings in the uh, printout for the add-on. So we're good to go. So at this stage, we can begin doing some stuff. So um, I am going to zoom the character out on all of, uh, zoom the camera out on all of my characters a little bit here. And so you're going to see me like all the time, you're going to see me turning on repeater to do something, turning off repeater, turning on repeater to do something, turning off. You should not be trying to move around in a 3D world with repeater enabled. And I'll demonstrate that here in a moment. But when you first get into the game client, you're going to want to test follow and assist. Before that though, with key maps enabled, of course, for all of this, before that, we want to invite our characters into a party. So shift alt I was the key, was the hotkey I showed earlier that's, uh, that's set in base hotkeys. When I hit that, you can see that, of course, in every window, we do have the party accept prompt. Now you can go window by window and just hit accept, or you might wanna just get used to using repeater, turn on repeater in your main window, and then line it up with the accept button. Click, everyone accepts, and now we're in a party. So now we can test follow and assist. Follow actually works outside of a party. I don't think assist works outside of a party. So just keep that in mind if you're having problems with follow and assist, you might not be in a party. Um, so anyway, get some distance between your team, hit the follow key. My follow key is mouse five. Your, your follow key may still be alt F or whatever you changed it to. So we can see that all of my characters did follow. We wanna test this on every window. Remember, our team is leaderless. So we'll get some distance. We'll hit the follow key, everyone follows. The thing is, if you don't get any distance and you just hit follow here, the characters will just kind of turn towards you and you don't get a really good chance to kind of debug any issues because if, if you, if you get distance between your characters, you can easily see any issues that arise with follow. So that's why I like to do it this way. Slot four, hit follow, everyone follows. And then of course, check slot five as well. 
hit follow and everyone works. So right off the bat, we didn't have to write any macros at all. The add-on is enabled. The, you know, we've got the names correctly set. We've got the right characters logged into so the right slots. Follow and assist will work like magic, except it's FTL, right? It's the FTL. It's that crazy long ass macro I showed earlier. So now we need to test um, assist. And I guess we can come over here. There's some things to show as well when it comes to assist delay, but let's just test assist first. So we've got two things to target over here. We've got this wisp that is uh, circling the trees and we've got a deer over here, right? So um, I guess that's not, that's not important. Let's just work with the deer for a moment. When I show the assist delay, we'll work with two targets. But right now I select the deer. We can see the target frame pop up here in my UI. If I turn on repeater, you just follow the mouse cursor in the other windows. You can see there's no target frame, right? There's no target frame. So the other characters don't have anything targeted at the moment. I'll turn off repeater. I'm going to hit my assist key. For me, that's mouse three. For you, that could still be alt A or again, whatever you set it to. I'm going to hit uh, mouse three with key maps enabled. They all pick up. We can switch to each of them if you want to see it. They all pick up the deer properly. And so from slot one, we can just turn on repeater, clear our targets, turn off repeater, move to the next window and test assist again. We always want to clear the target because if we still have the deer selected, it's kind of hard to tell whether you did a proper assist or not, right? So again, we'll target here, we'll assist. Everyone has a target. If you can't see that, you'll just have to trust me. It is, I, I do see it. So. Uh, and you would see it better on your screen as well. I have a very large screen in front of me. So we clear our targets and we're gonna do this again. We're gonna check, looks good. Turn on repeater, clear target, turn off repeater, sw uh, swap slots. Click, target, assist, everyone looks good. Repeater, um, clear, repeater off, swap slots. Click the deer, we have a target. Check the assist, looks good. Clear the target, fantastic. So back to slot one. So here's what I wanna show with, um, I'm gonna have to be zoomed out a little bit more here. So, okay, what can happen? It's gonna be maybe a little bit difficult for me to demonstrate this because I have, I have exceptional latency to the server. I, I live very close to the Chicago data center and Illyria have to, happens to be in the Chicago data center. So I actually have single digit, I have single digit, I have five milliseconds of latency to the game server. I have single digit latency. It's very, I live very close to it. And so, um, this may be difficult for me to demonstrate, but I do have a separate MMO gameplay series that has a miscellaneous video in there that talks about uh, latency and will show this exact demonstration perhaps a bit clearer if I can't get it to happen. So what's going to happen here? You may think that you may just be talking to your other characters, right? Because they're standing right next to you. You think when they assist, they're just talking to those characters or they're just talking to the leader. They're like, hey, give me your target, right? That's not what happens. When you, when you target something, that information gets sent to the server. Then the server acknowledges that, hey, okay, you've got that target, fantastic, A-OK. -okay. Then when you press assist from your other windows and you, you request that target data from the server. Now, if the server hasn't had enough time to update properly, then it's going to get the old data. So what I mean is that if, you, if you're switching between targets very quickly, you may find that you pick up either a dead target or even a bad target, something, you know, something that you aren't actually targeting on your leader. So what I'm gonna try to show here is I'm gonna, I've got the, the wisp targeted, you can see that. No one else has anything else targeted. They all have no target whatsoever in the other windows. I'm gonna switch to the deer very quickly and hit my assist key immediately. And assuming my exceptional latency doesn't, um, doesn't fix this problem, uh, doesn't cause it not to happen. Uh, what should happen is the other windows will not pick up the deer, they will actually pick up the wisp. So this is a little challenging for me because I have both my buttons here on the mouse fight. Perfect. So she had the deer, and as we look in all the other windows, they picked up the wisp because I assisted too quickly. And you have to think that I have single digit latency to the game server. So just keep that in mind. If you're running around with 20, 30, 40, 50 milliseconds of latency or more, you kind of have to double that number because the target data has to go to the server at that latency and it has to then be acknowledged. And then it's going to be sent back from the server to the other characters requesting the assist, the target data with the assist command. And so if it's hundred milliseconds in one direction, then the, the, the server has to acknowledge that. And then it's hundred milliseconds back in the other direction. So you may just have to, ultimately what I'm telling you is to chill out on switching targets too quickly because you will likely run into this issue. So with that said, we've got, um, 
following assist working properly. We've talked about the assist delay. What else do we have here? We're going to do some questing real fast, I think. Oh, performance. Right, real fast, performance. You get into the game client, things may still be performing pretty badly for you, right? You Maybe you didn't turn your settings down. Maybe you thought you had a really beastly machine, but now you're realizing maybe you don't have as beastly of a machine as you thought. So what can help? There's, there's, there's an entirely separate, um, dedicated page on the Iceboxer wiki called Tweak Your Frame Rate, which has a whole bunch of stuff to go through, including a way to monitor your hardware uh, to see what it's doing. However, a very quick way of doing this is to simply bring up the Windows Task Manager. Now, you're not going to... you. The default setting for this is the overall utilization. This will tell you absolutely nothing. If you really want to know the details, this tells you nothing. So change your graph to logical processors. We are on the performance tab of the task manager. There you can see all of your threads. Here are my 20 threads. You can see the way the load is being balanced across my threads. Nothing is being Nothing is, nothing is being pegged to the max, nothing sitting around 80, 90%. When you start to push around 80, 90, 100% is when you start to run into performance issues. This is why I spread all of my game clients across my threads evenly. I have that ability to do so. You may not have that many cores or that many threads on your CPU, but it is something to just think about on, on the way that you may have to play with your CPU core assignment. The other part of the equation here is a GPU. So you the Windows Task Manager also has the GPU data. Um, you can see that here. You can see the 3D load that is being put on the GPU. Now keep this in mind. This is in foreground, which means all of the game clients are in background and they're running at their background frame rate. So if I just come in here real fast and I, I turn on, if I turn on the frame rate indicator, we're focused on this window. You can see the 60. If I click on the Task Manager, kicks it down to 30, which is what our background frame rate limiter has it set. So you saw this little bump right here in performance in load because that is when this game client is in focus. So just keep in mind that if you're trying to measure what's going on and you don't have any game client in focus, you're all sitting at the background frame rates then, right? And so you're going to see lower performance. You're going to see lower load numbers across the board. The moment I bring this guy or this, this uh, druid into focus here, she doubles her frame rate and some of the load kind of goes up. I have a really good CPU for this, so it doesn't really matter. But GPU load, we definitely saw that little bit of bump there, right? So... When you're looking at performance, this is a good way to just kind of quickly see that. There are other programs that will give you more in-depth information. So there you go. Lots of information to keep in mind here. So let's get into questing. I think so. Yes, let's do some questing. So interacting with NPCs here, the most basic and generic way to do this is to simply pull up alongside the NPC. Let's scroll. Let's uh, zoom our camera in a little bit. And with repeater enabled... You would just pull up alongside the NPC and you can see in the, the upper windows there, you can see when we mouse over them, we get a little yellow exclamation point. And so that's what you're trying to just kind of line those up and get those in place and then interact with the NPC by right clicking on them. Some games you're going to be like all over the place. Your cameras might be in, in three different directions. And then when you try to line it up, well, you can see that slot two is not actually getting it lined up over there. And so she's going to be offset. World of Warcraft allows you to, uh, with the home and the end keys, again, with, with repeater enabled, I can just hit the home and the end keys and I can just cycle through the, um, the camera angles. There's five different presets and you can cycle through them. And so, um, you know, that will line up your cameras. You may, be playing, you may be playing a game that doesn't have that option. And in that case, you're just going to have to probably switch to your game, uh, to each game window and interact with the NPC that way. Otherwise, you might be able to use interact with target. That command may exist in your game client. We're not going to set that up just yet, but in a few minutes we will. So um, what you can also do is you can kind of back up your main and because there's this gap here, right? So you, if, you, if you minimize the gap, then when you go to interact, it's, there's a lot less offset between the mouse cursors. Uh, and so here's what we'll do. Um, we'll just right click. And because it's a beginner quest, we auto accept it. But uh, here you would accept it. If it wasn't auto accepted, then turn off repeater and hit follow and let's go. Now, I'm going to zoom my cameras out again. What you can do in World of Warcraft is very fancy. In the key bindings menu under the camera section, there's all the set view uh, settings. There's all the save view and all the resets. And here's all the camera settings. You can, you can set key binds for specific set views. You can create a custom view. Like if I zoomed out here, if I wanted to save this to view three, I could do that. And then I could just call, I could just call set, uh, 
I could just call Vue 3 then with another keybind. There's also macros that you can use. There's, if you just Google Warcraft set view macro, you are going to just be hit with plenty of examples on how to create a set view macro. This is something that's been around in the game for a very long time. Um, and so there's, there's plenty of examples, plenty of discussion out there on how to create a set view macro if that's what you need. Otherwise, there's key bindings in the game client as well. So let's kill some uh, young night sabers here. So we're going to target this guy. And because we have auto assist enabled, that means we just have to hit the, uh, the button on our action bar. Now I use ESDF, so I'm actually going to move this over to two because I like to hit two better. So with one thing with this, this target here, let me clear target. So target here, no one else has a target, right? When I hit the button on my action bar, they'll all target with the assist and they're all going to use their spell as well. Just like that. They all fire off and we kill the young knight saber. So we're going to kill a bunch of young knight sabers over here. And again, remember about the assist delay. So I like the pre, I like the lead with my target. I like to lead my targets here. So I'll click there so I know that the server already has the right target data before I initiate my assist. If that makes sense. Um, otherwise, I just like to lead with my lead with my targets here because again, if if well, that might not work here. If I have this selected and they picked up, some of them picked up the dead target. See, they picked up the dead target because I hit the button too fast. Just another example of assist delay. So there's six of six. So this is a pretty easy uh, kill quest. However, if you're out questing, you've got a bunch of quests that you're doing. The objective tracker is right here. What can help um, well, obviously, in, in, in World of Warcraft, you can just mouse over the corpse and the tooltip. You can't see it. It's behind the camera. The tooltip will generally give you information for quest progress for the whole party. Um, but maybe you're playing a game that doesn't have that, or maybe you're at a stage in World of Warcraft where that information isn't reflected in the tooltip. In that case, I do suggest you just kind of, when you're getting used to this, just kind of bounce between your windows and just kind of stare at the quest, the quest objective tracker. And you can see that they all see, they all say ready for turn it, right? So we're good to go. We're, we're good to go on the turn it. So once again, um, yeah, we'll pull up alongside the NPC. We won't interact with target just yet. We'll pull up along the NPC, uh, alongside the NPC. We'll right click. We'll line up our, our, our mouse cursors. We'll right click and we will accept. We'll complete the quest. We'll accept the next one. Um, actually, yeah, we'll accept this one. And then for this next quest giver, let me show how to set up interactive target. Now, this is something I'm trying to be nice here, but this is something that really baffles me. This is something that really baffles me. The, the, the setup for interactive target, I got to say this because of, of someone who's been helping someone for so, for helping people for so long. Um, interactive target is incredibly simple to set up. And in fact, it is documented, it is, it is such an asked about thing that it is documented in four different places. There's the, if you read the quick, uh, the, the quick start guide on the Iceboxer Wiki, under the interaction with NPCs section of the quick start guide, the written guide, it's all laid out right there. Likewise, there is actually a standalone dedicated page on the Iceboxer Wiki for interact with Target which once again lays out every single step and gesture you need to do in order to get this set up. If you also just are searching for interact with target on the Icebox or Wiki, you will also come across the GIFs page or the GIFs page. But I also created a 60 second GIF that shows the four sections of setting up interact with target. And it's actually only three that you need to configure. And then finally, if you watched the post wizard setup video, interact with target is also covered in there as well. So four different sections, all of them explain this very simple process. I'm sorry, my tone has changed because this shit blows my mind. You set up an in-game key binding. You go into Icebox, you set a variable keystroke, and then you set the hotkey in base hotkeys, and you're fucking done. That's it. So starting with the in-game key bind, turn on repeater, turn off key maps. Whenever you're setting, uh, something I didn't mention before, whenever you're setting um, key bindings in-game, Disable your key maps because um, uh, it, you may ac accidentally send an assist or an interact command along with that, and that may screw up your key bindings. There, there's, a, there's actually an entry on the FAQ on the Icebox or Wiki that tells you um, why this happens or, or just to shut off your key maps when you're setting key bindings. So 
Um, we'll bring up the key bindings menu. Now under the targeting section, we scroll all the way down. We see interact with target. This is already set for me because this is what I just use standard. And so this is set to H on all of my windows. It is set to H. You will want to set it to a key, some key, any key, but just keep it in mind what you set it to. Mine is set to H. I don't need to make any changes. So once you're done with that, you come into IS Boxer. We come down to the variable keystroke section. Not the character variable keystrokes, not the character set variable keystrokes, not the slot specific variable keystrokes, the global section right here. I'd mentioned this earlier, we would be touching this. The interact with targets variable keystroke. Set this to the exact same thing you assigned in game. For me, that's H. This is actually a button on my mouse, which is very easy to press. Again, find which hotkeys work for you, convenient hotkeys, things you'll be pressing often, put them in places that you could reach easily. Hit OK. It's right there. Finally, the base hotkeys key map. Uh, where is that at? Base hotkeys. Interact with target. Set a hotkey. Set this. This will be the key that you are physically pressing. The variable keystroke is being sent to the game client. This can match. It doesn't have to match, but I'm going to make it match because I like it to match. Again, it is a button on my mouse. So I'm going to set this to H. So I'm pressing H. Iceboxer is sending H. The in-game keybind for interact with target is set to H. And so therefore, I will interact with my target. The fourth section for interact with target is in your character set. But you don't ever need to touch this, at least not right now. If you chose under this, this configuration panel, if you chose an, any sort of MMORPG when you first began setting up through the wizard, this interact with target active method section assignment here will already be assigned to interact with target standard. I've run into helping people with troubleshooting. Somehow this has been unassigned. Sometimes this is deleted, even though people swear they're not touching things. Um, there's no reason this is, this would be unassigned or deleted that I know of none at all. <laughs> so this is already set. Don't change this right now. We made changes in three, three sections in game key bind, variable keystroke, base hotkeys, hotkey. That's it. Just those three sections. You're done. Export your settings. Let me get out of here. Export my settings. And now. And now after everything refreshes, we come up to the NPC. We, I don't have repeater repeaters here. Repeater is off. I don't have a target on any of my other characters. When I hit my interact with target hotkey, which is H, I will assist and I will interact with the NPC. Just like that. That's it. That's all the setup there is. In-game keybind, variable keystroke that matches the in-game keybind. And then uh, a hotkey on interact with target in base hotkeys. That is exactly what every other instruction on any other page of the wiki and the post wizard setup video shows. It's a very simple concept. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so funny, it's so funny. Working tech support, people find the craziest things to mess up sometimes. So anyway, we're gonna do these last two quests here because um, they, they, uh, they do reflect the usefulness of the FTL setup. One final thing I'm going to show, I'm going to show here. I did want to show this, the, uh, the formations. So um, uh, did I, I don't know if I pointed this out earlier. We'll point it out again. The formations under, under the base hotkeys key map, um, they are multi-step formations, which means you're going to have to press the key twice. So step one does one set of things. Again, you can click in here. You can see that it's like just moving all of your characters. And then step two just moves a few less characters. And... Um, these are all variable keystrokes. That's why they tie in. That's why I changed my variable keystrokes earlier to ESDF because formations are based off of the movement keys that you have assigned in Iceboxer. So uh, the star formation is just one step, but the other two are two steps. So I'm going to press. And, and because of this, you have to think, how do you move your characters in the game world? Let me break follow real fast. Well, you hold down a key, right? You hold down the key and that moves your characters. So when you use a formation, you hold down the key to move your characters. 
and however long you hold down the key is however long they're going to move. Icebox is not a bot. It's not going to move your characters to specific X, Y, and Z coordinates on the map. It can't do that. It does not have that information. You are in control. You are in charge of how far you want your formation to be spread out. If you hold it for a long period of time, they're going to spread out for a long period of time. You want to make a huge flying V formation like this, you can do that, right? You can do that. But I held the key down for an extended period of time. If we just regroup and we do this really short, if I just hold it down a little bit, we've got a phenomenal screenshot, a phenomenal screenshot um, formation. I've used this plenty of times in the past. I really like the flying view formation. So keep that in mind. And the line formation is exactly the same. Again, it is also two steps. So one step spreads them out. Initially, the second step spreads the other two out. You can back up, fill in the blank, and there you go. That's the line formation. So that's how you work for with formations. Some people, um, they want to try to move around in formations. So let's do that. We'll put ourselves back in a flying V again. So we'll turn on repeater. I said not to move around in a 3D game world with repeater enabled, but we'll do it anyway just to show that shit don't work, yo. All right. So we'll start moving forward. And everything seems fine off the bat, right? Everything seems pretty good. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is great. This is amazing. We'll just look like this great army moving around. Then we return right. And... Uh, well, everything's fucked because you can't move around in a 3D world with repeater enabled. I have been in arguments on the internet with people. It's a terrible thing to be in, but I've been in them where people were so convinced. This is another thing that makes me chuckle. <laughs> what a funny word to use. Um, I've, people have been so convinced that whatever they saw or whatever their friend told them is that they could stack all their characters up and move around as a unit. And that's what they want to do. And then they, they begin multiboxing and they try that and they realize that very quickly, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But they, they want to get into a fight. They're, they're adamant that they, what they saw, what they were told, and that uh, this software just doesn't work the way they want it to. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I promise you, we've been using follow since day one. And any other game where we want to multibox that as a follow command, we also use the follow command in those games. Uh, so get used to that. You have to think that even if you could stack up your characters on the exact same spot and move around as a unit, what happens the moment, the moment one of your characters gets stuck on a rock, a, a log, a branch laying on the ground, a fence post somewhere, what happens then? Because latency plays, plays into all of this, right? One character may have slightly different latency than the rest. And so that's one thing that throws you off from the very beginning. So if one character gets stuck, how do you regroup that one character onto the rest of the party? Likewise, if you're in a PvE encounter where a boss throws out some fears, or if you're in a PvP encounter where you might get AoE fear bombed, what in the fuck do you do then? How would you regroup from that? You wouldn't. You wouldn't regroup. It would be nothing short of a clusterfuck. I'm sorry I'm swearing here, but I'm really passionate about these things. And it's just so odd that people would want to fight about the fact that they want to be able to stack their characters and they saw it and they know it can be done. When in fact, it can't be done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, unfortunately, we're going to blow up some Grelk in here. Um, I'm just going to kind of blow these guys up um, and we're going to blow a bunch of them up. And what's going to happen is we're going to be able to loot because this is a dead body loot quest. So again, you'll see me just kind of leading with my target here as we go. As we blow a bunch of these up, pick up this guy in the back. I really don't want to interfere with this guy. He's kind of looking like he's a keyboard turner. We'll blow some stuff up. So we only need five of these and it looks like we've killed five things. So we'll just loot this. Again, this is where interact with target comes into play. You know, the question that you can ask yourself, I mean, interact with target is, is literally written in plain English as to what it does. It interacts with your target. So the question is, can you target a dead body? Yes, you can. Can you interact with the dead body? Yes, you can. Therefore, you can use interact with target. So I'll target this and I'm going to hit my interact with target key. All my characters are going to interact with this. It's going to happen very quickly though, because again, the loot issue is fixed. So they're all going, they're all going to loot very quickly. Oh, actually, um, hold on. I don't know if they're going to loot very quickly. Let's turn on um, auto loot. So with auto loot enabled, they're going to loot very quickly. So again, target, hit my interactive target key. They're all going to loot. Just like that. Oh, we needed six, not five. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. 
That's a little embarrassing. So anyway, they all looted. We'll, we'll just kill this last guy real fast. We'll get our sixth, uh, our sixth bag off of him or our sixth bit of fell moss here. We'll loot again there. There's two different, uh, two separate examples of looting from dead bodies. And again, um, the tooltip shows me the information that everyone is six of six, but if you want to just check the quest tracker, quest objective tracker, we see that everybody has fell moss corruption that is done. So, so far, so easy. So far, so far, so far, this has been easy, right? This has been very simple. Multiboxing seems phenomenal. Then we get to ground collection quests. So this is great that this, this starting area shows this. So the ground collection quest, if this guy doesn't steal it from me, this is something that cannot be targeted. This is also something that cannot be interact with, interacted with by multiple characters. So you might think that you want to turn on repeater then instead and just kind, of, just kind of mouse over this thing. You can see the little gear icon on all of the windows. And if we right click on this at the same time, only one character is going to be able to pick this up. So we'll do that. They all try to loot it. Only one character gets it. And if we look at, we can see one of five here. We look at the rest, it's all zero of five. So they didn't get it. So now as a multi-boxer, you get to experience ground collection quests where you walk around on each character and you have to collect X amount of that thing. And, uh, and you have to do that on each and every one of your characters. So right here, right now, this may be, some people may be like, well, man, this is going to take forever. Um, yes and no. In World of Warcraft, especially in retail, though, there are later parts of the game where some things can be interacted with, uh, with multiple characters. And so is the bag over here? No. Uh, some things can be interacted with by multiple characters, even though they are ground collection quests. But during the initial leveling process, like earlier on in the game, the earlier expansions, not so much, not so much. So you'll be walking around and doing this just like this. And you're, you know, for me, I've got to get five bags per character. So I have to come up with 25 different bags. But this is a perfect example for why having a leaderless setup is really invaluable because you're just watching me switch windows and just doing the quest like I normally would from that character, right? It's somewhat relaxing. I don't really mind these types of quests. Some people really, they... <laughs> Some people really, really hate these quests. I understand that if like every single quest was a ground collection pickup quest, this would really become tiresome and tedious. But I mean, man, if you're just listening to some music in the background or something like that, you know, it all just kind of works out. Just kind of go through the motions, grab the bags, and uh, we got to bounce back and forth between the two camps. But um, unless this person's going to steal it from us, this guy's kind of running around. Looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. But um, we'll just continue to grab these bags. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a perfect example for why leaderless setups are great. Because think if you had a leader. If you had a leader, only one leader that you could only follow and assist from. So this character right here, right? You'd have to walk around and come up to the bags themselves. Again, I don't want to steal things from this guy. But you'd have to come up to the bag and either turn on repeater and try to interact with it for the other window, which she's actually offset right now. Or you'd have to swap to the window every single time, interact, then swap back and go back to leading. Which isn't the end of the world, but does add a bit of time to everything, right? If you already thought that these ground collection pickup quests were tedious, well, that just adds a good bit of tedium to it as well. But uh, I will finish this quest. I am, no, I don't really know what the hell this person. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is gathering them. So I will finish this quest on my own and I will meet you guys back by the NPCs so we can turn this in one more time and then do a little bit of an outro. So I will, I will see you then. Okay, so we're going to handle these final two turn-ins here. I'll just see if we can reach both of these NPCs from the middle. Again, I just selected the NPC, hit my interact with target key, turn on repeater, and then move through the dialogue panes, complete the quest. Got a level, fantastic. Uh, turn off repeater, click on the NPC, hit the interact with target key, move through the dialogue panes, there's nothing to choose, and then complete the quest and accept the next one. And so there you go. These are the absolute basics of multi-boxing. You got the, the exploration of IS Boxer. I talked through a handful of things there. We set up a character set. We got it launched. We talked to a bunch of stuff there. A lot of things that probably aren't talked about in depth in the quick setup wizard video that is much shorter. Um, but at this point, these are the skills you need to continue on. Right, And from here, you will likely just kind of repeat this process for a little while as you quest, as you get accustomed to driving with uh, some characters on follow, because it is a different mindset of, uh, of keeping all of those characters on follow. You're, more often than not, as you're new, and even myself today, you will lose characters 
They will get caught on, again, rocks or fence posts or any little object in the world or something will happen. Something will happen, you'll lose the characters and it's totally expected, right? It's frustrating, it's sometimes tedious, but God damn it, do I love this play style. You can just do basic things or again, you can totally amplify your setup and do crazy things if you need an extra challenge in World of Warcraft. There's nothing more challenging, regardless of what the opposition to the multi-boxing playstyle may have you believe. Jumping in, doing Mythic Plus, 10-man raiding, even combining multiple five-man uh, multi-boxers together to take on raids. This shit is crazy. It's great. It's so much fun. I love every bit of it. And this has been something I've been doing for over a decade, even though I don't have any notable achievements. Hopefully one day I will, though. I'm much more of a, a systems designer and theory crafter, though, as I said. So that's it. And this is where I leave you in this video. Uh, thank you for watching. It's been a full-length feature film directed by, written by, cast credits, all me, only Mirai. That's my name. Thank you for watching. And I will see you, hopefully, in the next video.